log. Give me a second. Zoom is messing up now. I don't know why. Just give me a second. There we go. The Zoom was messing up for a second there. Y'all can hear me for a moment, but now we are back up. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Darian Gilliam, a.k.a. Black Flags Matter, back for a throwback edition of the NASCAR uh, uh, Weekly Podcast. And let me just say, this shirt is so atrocious. I love Junior Man, but oh my gosh, there's just so much going on here right now <laughs> at the moment. But uh, first and foremost, we are joined here tonight by the one and only Colton Herta. How's it going, man? Oh, oh, he's frozen. He's frozen. Oh no! It really is. It really oh, is a throwback oh, stream. It's a throwback <laughs> stream. Oh my gosh! I didn't even realize that. Hold on. <laughs> First, we have the problems with the Zoom thing. He looks, he looks shocked. Oh, he's one. coming back. He's coming back. I didn't okay, even notice okay. that. <laughs> there it is. Too long. All right, you're back. You're back. This is starting. This is starting off great. This is true. Sorry, I totally lagged out. No, it's all good. No, you're just frozen on our screen. We're gonna keep. Can that you up see there. the frozen version of yourself on, in no. the Zoom? Call? Oh, oh yeah, you'll see it later. Hold on, I'll, I'll take a screenshot. <laughs> yeah, take a screenshot. Of yes. Oh, oh, it's oh it's gone. It's gone. All right, but we'll see it on Twitter. But no, I was giving this whole this whole intro and stuff, and then I see, oh, he's frozen. Okay, so now he's back in. What's up, Colton? How's it going, man? It's good, guys. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing good tonight, Pretty man. Good. A pleasure to have you on. Now, let's get straight into it. Uh, talk about the start of your 2021 IndyCar season so far. A lot of changes within your team. Uh, also, you know, some family members involved as well. You can get into that uh, detail for a little bit. But uh, four races in, and I got to say, mixed results. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's definitely been an up and down season so far with the start at Barber and getting caught up in that first lap incident, then getting a win in St. Pete and right back to the back uh, in the first race at Texas with a right rear failure and then back to fizz. So we just got to get a little bit more consistent. I've been enjoying this year. Um, as you kind of noted too, my dad's on my, on my box this year, he's calling strategy for me. So that's been, uh, that's been awesome so far. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully we get to do uh, some more races, finish out the season strong and, and get a little bit more consistent for me. Talk about a up and down season. A big up was that win at St. Petersburg. That's your fourth career win, correct? So talk a little bit more about that race. Uh, it had to be pretty special. Important to get a win early on in the season. Yeah, first first race win for me on a street course. Uh, my other three have been on permanent road courses. So uh, that was that was super special to get it that early and, and get the momentum going straight from uh, obviously St. Uh, Barber was a disaster for us out on lap one and then to, to kind of get the momentum back uh, straight into St. Pete. Cars on rails. Everybody did such a good job. The pit stops were amazing. Um, we never put a foot wrong, and you know I think we really deserved it. We had really good pace all week long. So I just saw that you guys had a double header at Texas, and I saw all this stuff about both races, but probably not for the greatest reason. But I want to hear your take on it about the PJ one or basically results of the PJ one at Texas and what your thoughts are on all that. Yeah, I don't really have anything uh, positive to say about it. Um, you know, it, it might have made NASCAR racing better in a way, but it's completely ruined IndyCar racing uh, there. One one groove track for us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know they're, they, they've been trying to, to get rid of that stuff, but, um, you know, I think they like a month before we got there, they, they were trying to get rid of it and they couldn't, so they, they put a new layer down for when NASCAR gets there. That and, and the reprofiling, reprofiling of the banking and one and two didn't help but it, the track can still produce great great racing um we just need that pj1 for indycar to be be scrapped us up for uh for our racing to be a little bit better there so i feel like nowadays on motorsports twitter every time you like run well or um you know in in the case of uh the saint petersburg uh, uh win every time i um log on after uh one of your races i always see Heard it F1, heard it F1 all the time, basically. Right. You know, uh, even uh, even the one and only Mario and Andretti was uh, even saying, "Hey, like uh, possible super license, maybe." I don't know. I mean, how does that feel to um, to get that sort of recognition? Like, hey, maybe uh, you could be a potential American F1 hopeful. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it feels good to be talked about, but um, you know, it doesn't really mean much until you're you're actually you know in Formula One, but. You know, for me, I, I have a great program with Andretti, and and I can win races every single weekend. So it's definitely something that you have to to think about when getting an offer to Formula One. It has to be uh, a pretty good one to where you know I, I'm leaving a winning seat. So you know, definitely have to think about that before I before I even think if I want to go to Formula One or not. 
that kind of builds, it sort of alludes to my next question as well. Like what would it take for maybe a formula one type offer to, to take you away from IndyCar, but also, you know, if you stay in IndyCar for a number of years, like what, what do you want to accomplish in IndyCar before you perhaps make that jump into, into formula one, if a good option comes up? Right. I mean, if a good option to me, a good option looks like a top three team or, or them giving me incentives of being in a top three team. I understand it's a little arrogant to, to just not want to go unless I'm in a top, top three team. Um, and I'd be willing to work for it if, if they were to put me in, in one of their junior teams, uh, you know, in like an Alpha Tauri or Alpha Romeo, something like that, um, in hopes that I would get a chance uh, at moving forward. Um, you know, as far as IndyCar goes, you know, it, It'd be amazing if I could win the championship this year, get a 500 win. Um, and, you know, if, uh, listen, if I don't go to Formula One, right, like I, I really enjoy racing IndyCar. It's where my heart is. It's what I grew up watching and, and loving. So, um, you know, if, if I go to Formula One and I get an opportunity, it's going to have to be soon because I'm, so, I'm young for, for you, know, you know, I think I got two years and then I won't get an opportunity. So, and if it doesn't come, then I'm going to be, extremely happy racing indie cars for the rest of my life hopefully i uh, kind of kind of building on your racing and indie cars right now one of the big talking points i've seen is about the schedule and the lack of ovals and i kind of wanted to see or gauge where you are in that uh argument i guess it is or maybe debate of uh would you want more ovals if so which ones uh if not why i guess uh yeah i mean it would be awesome if we could get to 20 races, um, you know, keep all the road courses that we have, but just add, you know, two or three more ovals. Um, you know, I like places like Kansas or Michigan. Um, you know, Kansas is a mile and a half, similar to Texas, not quite as high banking, but, you know, I think it could put a good show on. I like watching the NASCARs run around there. Run around there. I think it could put a, put a good show on for, for the Indy cars, um, you know, Milwaukee, um, would be, would be great. Um, it'd be great to go back to Iowa too. I always like racing. There is always a, a good two lane track for us. So, um, you know, there's, there's not a lack of ovals in the U S there's plenty of ovals. Um, and you know, we just got to find out which ones are going to work best for, for our aero, aero package and produce the best racing and, and go on that. So now we're at that point in the interview, Colton, where we're going to ask the chat um, some questions here. Um, well, I already have a super chat here. Appreciate Groovy Goose. Um, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. His question is, uh, which IndyCar scheme would you throw it back to? Oh, key race. Oh. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there yep, we go. Yep. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> some dodgy Wi-Fi today. Oh, my God. No, it's okay. <laughs> did you hear the question, though? I did not. I'm okay, sorry. okay. So, basically, Groovy Goose sent me a $2 super chat asking, if you could throw it back in IndyCar, which scheme would you throw it back to? Um, If I could do any of them, I would put do my dad's uh, 1998 shell car. Mm. I always loved the look of that car. There's so many great liveries in the 90s but you know i i just think like the color contrast and and how they designed that car was so beautiful oh yeah definitely for sure let's see some other questions here um i see someone asking um what are your thoughts on basically fontana being converted into a short track i know some indycar fans were like oh we love that layout so much but indycar hasn't raced on there since 2015 so what are your thoughts on that um yeah obviously I, it's supposed to be similar to like Bristol, right? Like it's yeah, it's, it's like gonna a be combination short. of both Bristol and Martinsville, basically. Right, right. So I mean, that would definitely put a nail in for IndyCar ever going back there, um, which sucks because it is a great track for IndyCar. Um, selfishly, I'd probably say that you know it. I like how it is right now. Um, you know, I I have not watched a NASCAR race there, so I can't say <laughs> if it's good for NASCAR or back or or not. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, but you know, I, yeah, IndyCar always had IndyCar always had incredible races mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, unfortunately we just had, didn't have good enough fan turnout to, to make it profitable. But, um, you know, I would, I would love to keep Fontana as it is to have the option of IndyCar going back there. And the final question in the chat comes from Denny delivers. Uh, his question is, uh, pertaining to your meme, why big chungus? Yeah. I have to ask what, what like, like yeah. where'd you get that name from on Twitter anyway? I, I was wondering that too. <laughs> So it, it wasn't me that chose it. So somebody, um, one of the camera guys, one of the photographers for, for IndyCar, the series, um, 
gave me it and thought it looked funny. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll put it on my helmet for this race. And that race ended up being Coda, oh, where I won my first IndyCar nice. race. So, oh, okay. so I just kind of, I was like, maybe it's a little bit of good luck charm. So I just kept it. And I've always kept it on the back of my helmet. I got it on my boots this year. Um, but I've just had them on ever since. Oh, that's so cool. Because oh. now we get to see all the memes on Twitter of you, your face pasted on a fat Bucks Bunny meme, basically. I know. I, I get tagged at least like two or three times a week on that's different I, I Bugs Bunny memes. Yeah, I figured see, you did. What I'm shocks see- me is that meme is two years old now. That, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It was just yesterday. It's, just wow. it's a dead, It was a dead meme. I'm bringing it back. There you go. I've, I've literally seen that on my timeline and I'm like, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand whatsoever. So it actually gets like, it, it brings me to a little bit of like a catharsis here of like, yes, I know what it means. There you go. Yeah. Directly from the source. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Well, Colton, I don't want to hold you up too long. I mean, it is the month of May after all, about to go to Indy, you know, for the Indy 500, also the Indy GP, all that stuff. So before you head out, where can people find you on social media? It's just going to be Colton Herta on everything, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for having me on, guys. Hopefully uh, everybody in here will tune into Indy Grand Prix next weekend, um, Saturday race. And so that's going to be, be an awesome one. And obviously really excited to get to get Indy going and uh, really excited that IndyCar has done so much to, to bring fans back to have 135,000 people at a race. is going to be uh insane oh. so oh, it's oh, gonna yeah. be awesome oh yeah that's right I, I totally forgot about that what uh what are your thoughts on that basically just like you know just more excitement you know and have fans back in the stands obviously yeah it's awesome right like we we obviously didn't get into this sport for the fans but you know when you get to the top level it brings so much more excitement for us for the drivers uh and a lot more energy to the races so love having them back uh obviously it's been in small doses so far once you get to indy we'll we'll kind of open it up some more um and yeah i think it, it, roger has done an incredible job working with with the iu health of, officials in indianapolis and getting everything sorted and safe to where people don't have to be worried to go um and and creating a safe environment for everybody which is most important to to get racing back going to uh, to a normal manner yeah, it's the indy five oh, really oh go ahead Really quick, um, so I'm not going to be able to make it to Indy in May, but I am in August uh, for the NASCAR IndyCar doubleheader. Like, what should I expect? Like, as I've never been to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I've never been to an IndyCar race, and I just right. I kind of want to know what to expect mm-hmm. from somebody who's in it. I've talked to David Land about it, and you know, and, and that's a good source. But you're in the race, so I kind of want to know like right. what, what your I guess thoughts on that are. Um, I mean, I love, I love the idea of having these weekends. Um, you know, I think if I could tell you one thing, it'd probably be sitting in turn one there in the grandstands or any in, infield, uh, um, grass mounds. There you go. I'm um, right. Yep. That, and, you know, I think that's where you're going to see most of the action. Uh, we have a really long straight heading into there. Um, the fans are, are awesome in Indy. They know so much about Indy car racing, uh, and are great supporters of it. So you'll definitely probably meet some very interesting people there and, uh, and they'll, they'll be able to tell you a lot more about Indy car. Sweet. Awesome. I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. Colton, thank you so much. Good luck the month of May and the rest of the 2021 Indy car season. And we'll have you back on in the future, hopefully after uh, your crown 2021 champion, hopefully. So you never <laughs> there know. we go. You never Thanks know. guys. All right, thank you. Thanks, you, talk to you later. Take All care. Right. That, that was like the, that was funny. That, that was, was the most throwback style interview we could have for this with Dude. lag issues, intro issues, all on Darian's channel. Of <laughs> course, of course it is. It's perfect. And uh, I and I forgot to get a water, so I'm gonna go get that really oh, quick. I got mine too. I got mine though. My mouth gets really I, dry early. I am parched. <laughs> But really quick, 276 people watching. Only uh, we have just over 100 likes. Make sure to lick the like button, everybody. Um, so yeah, for some reason, YouTube messed up and it put the stream in the category of entertainment at first, and I had to change it back to sports. <laughs> I don't know, man. YouTube, hey, we're entertaining. Dude, we're YouTube entertaining. keeps messing up, man. They put my stream accidentally as entertainment instead of sports. Now, Jared, so I, I, I had, had a stream. <laughs> I had a stream default to people and blog. Yeah, what, like what, what's what, going on? Man? When have I ever picked that? Oh goodness. Well, yeah, no, clue. no, I mean. I, I had the one, I think it was it the IRL stream or the last time I hosted the podcast. I think it was the IRL stream where I'm like, we're going to start at seven o'clock and it switched it to 620. And I get like a bunch of people being like, okay, where the hell are they? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, oh. that was funny. Yeah, that NASCAR draft was hilarious. Okay, but no, let's get right down to it here. We have a lot to go over tonight. Uh, so first off, Kansas happened. Um, and talking to Eric before the show, he even forgot Kansas happened. There. I, <laughs> like, what? It happens to me every week. I was telling you all beforehand, like I was talking, I was at my parents house yesterday and my dad's like oh you know we haven't talked since the race on sunday and he started like going to and i was sitting there like Shit, what race just happened what race just happened, oh, what kansas, race just happened? So i was like oh yeah kansas. kansas okay kyle bush won kyle larson was fast he's dumped blaney at the- okay yeah 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 but it was weird it's like that happens to me every week it takes me like 10 seconds to remember what race just happened but it was a fun one yeah kyle bush becomes the he oh, won dang. the Bushy McBush race. He ten. did. How many winners is that now? Ten? Ten. Ten, ten in the first 11, 11 races. Uh, pretty exciting stuff that's, you know, already off to a much better start than he was last year. So that's great for Kyle Bush and all of the uh, Kyle Bush nation. I thought it was interesting, you know, his his post-racer, you know, front stretch interview, I guess you could say, um, was kind of a different tone. It was more of a, a solemn, somber tone. You know, I, I know the Bush family, yeah. they've gone through some things off the track, that's but also why, it, yeah. the way he talked about, the way he talked about winning it reminded me of how some other veteran drivers in recent years at the end of their careers talked about winning about how, you know, you sell, you start celebrating these wins more and more like, because you never know when one win could be your, your last win. And I think Kyle Bush now in his, I guess, mid, he's what, 36, 37 years yeah, old. He's starting to he's realize, starting, mm-hmm. he's starting to realize that, you know, Hey, he went almost a full year last year without winning a race. Like, you just never know. You can't, you can't take these wins for granted. A guy who's won over 200 wins races across the top three series in NASCAR. It was interesting to kind of see him, I don't know, view that win with more perspective, if you will. He still gave the fans the this afterwards. He did his typical yeah, Kyle Busch yeah. bow. But, you know, I thought that was a different tone. And I think, it, I don't know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. And he was one of the fastest cars all day long. I thought it was a deserving win. Well, and I think, you know, I, I, just being a junior fan, seeing his losing streak um, for so long, when he would win, like those last five or six years of his career, it was, it was a lot like it. And I think it's cause you know, we don't realize it because he won the 2019 championship, but basically in the last two full years, he's won three races. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause after Pocono, he didn't win uh, again until the championship at Homestead. He, then he won at the end of the year at Texas. And now this one, I mean, you can, you can add the, the, uh, the shootout, the clash. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but those aren't point races, yeah. you know. And and let's be real in the races. clash. Yeah. Well, let's be real in the clash. He he, he lucked into that. Oh, yeah. 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 Also, yeah. Jimmy Johnson fans, they make sure to mention Noah's final win was the 2019 clash. They make sure to mention that one every when time. he crashed the field. Um, <laughs> but but so I I have to admit, like you know, because my dad even said it during the race. He goes, I don't. He goes. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I'm rooting for Kyle Busch at the end of a race. And I'm like the same way. And it wasn't because I picked him, but it was like genuinely, I'm like, I, I kind of want to see this guy win again. On his birthday, um, called the Bushy McBush race. This oh, yeah. Is just, it, it was it so all perfect. Added I'm like, this is real? Does this really happen? Did, did we ever find out if Brexton won his race? Because I heard he did well, uh, but they never said if he won or not. No, I don't. I, I, I haven't really heard bad, anything. Bad, bad, yeah. bad. I don't know about that. I'm just saying, it would have been the perfect weekend for the Bush family when it comes to racing. Exactly. Like, but there was always was... that one fan in the stands who just, boo! <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, I saw Soundhead on Twitter being like, that That fan is my spirit animal. Yeah, it's just like, that's the <laughs> one guy. But also, speaking of which, the other Kyle, Kyle Larson, what in the heck was that? He sent it in on Blaney there. I mean, I... Clearly, that five team has the most dominant intermediate program. The problem is they can't finish races outside of Las Vegas. I mean, Atlanta, mm-hmm. they, that was a little bit different. That was a totally Ran out of tires, yeah, lap I mean, traffic. But, but in this case, it was bad restart. He sent Blaney. He sent yeah. Blaney there, man. Now, the cautions you know, that kept falling in those final few laps didn't help his case neither. He kept falling in the back of the pack and all that stuff. So, But dang, like it's just he can't find any luck now. But. Yeah, he was he was definitely the fastest car I think consistently. But I, I think guys like Kyle Busch, um, I'm forgetting a couple others. Reddick, Reddick, Reddick was quick, but also Hamlin I think was pretty quick. They were able to compete with Larson from time to time. But <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jared. I thought you were no, saying no, something. no, no. I had something in my throat. No, it was a, <laughs> a hiccup sounded like an inter, inter, interjection. Um, but uh, no, no. I, I so Larson was clearly the fastest car. But yeah, with all those short runs at the end, restarts. 
those are hard to defend, especially because, you know, going into turn one, it kind of just depends on who gets the better push. And there was that one restart. I think it was the second to last restart where Larson as the leader picked the outside lane thinking four tire Brad Keselowski would push well. And Keselowski didn't for whatever reason, he laid back and didn't get a good jump either. And so that screwed Larson. And then, yeah, on that last restart, I think, I don't know. I think Blaney was in front of him. I don't think Blaney was really that fast. And I think Larson just got impatient. They were already losing ground to the inside lane pretty quick. And I think Larson just, well, I kind of lost his head, but at that point, I think the race was over regardless. They got such a bad jump. That restart. Now, both the Penske cars did that, I noticed. Like, both, because that's Blaney it, was next true. to yeah, him. Yeah, sure. Um, but it reminded me of an old story that Tony Stewart told. And he, he said, he was, I think it was two thousand. I think it was 2005. He was leading the Daytona 500 on a restart. And he waved out the window for Jeff Gordon to, like, put get up to his bumper and push him. And Gordon just sat there and I saw on the broadcast, I saw on the broadcast, Larson go like this, oh, like this. <laughs> and, and Kozlowski just sat there. And I have to, I have to think in that moment, Larson's in his mind is like, I lost. oh, I am so effed right now. <laughs> yeah. Cause he is going to, he's going to do it. That is one frustrating. I mean, there's a several frustrating things about this rules package, but you know, while restarts are super fun to watch, I think we can agree. Those are pretty yeah. fun. Those first couple yeah. laps. It is a little bit frustrating that the lead cars are very heavily dependent on the kind of push they get, especially at tracks like Kansas or like Las Vegas, where they got that sort of smoothly curved straightaway. Like, I don't know about Atlanta or Charlotte, you know, where they have or Texas. I don't think yeah. it's quite as evident, but like, yeah, the fact that Larson lost the lead purely because the guy behind him didn't push on the restarts kind of lame. So certainly yeah. the short runs, hurt larson at the end but you know he also kind of lost his head but kyle bush got the win so credit to him to him yeah props to him and the the not props to nascar in the case of that tire too i was like eh, like that's a that was they should yeah. have thrown the caution there in my opinion oh uh, that I, we we talked about that actually i think before the show yesterday a bit and like it, it just was infuriating because you knew exactly what they were doing like you knew that they were going to wait just so they could get like, it, it really felt like, ah, we don't want to restart with 50 to go. We want it more with 30 to go because more crazy stuff could happen and then it could lead to what we had. Um, I don't think they like playing all the rest of it out, but I just, my thing is they passed that tire 20 times and all yes. 40 cars were on track at that point, <laughs> which means that tire was probably around passed around 800 times before they threw that caution and poor chris busher his 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 crew saw that and they were like stay out they will call the caution and nascar they should have thrown the caution there i mean like hey i don't blame them for being upset in that case like like i, th I think we agree they got the call right in the end yes. i think it should yeah. have been a caution you know history but says they that threw a tire it right after he pit it exactly like, that's, that's ridiculous I think, and I heard some of NASCAR's explanation. They believe that the tire was not an imminent, you know, safety threat, but they knew that they had to go get it. And in their minds, they were thinking, we'll wait the few laps for pit stops to cycle out. But guys like Stenhouse and notably Chris Buescher went much longer, much longer, because I think they believe that NASCAR would be somewhat consistent and eventually throw the L because, you know, I think we all kind of say, you know, if that tire is a safety hazard with 35 to go, it was also a safety hazard with 50 to go. So yeah, why'd you not throw the caution with 50 yeah, to go? Yeah. Like at, at the, what I thought, I thought, you know, they're waiting to throw the caution for Busher to pit. But then as Busher stayed out longer and longer, once it got to like 15 laps straight of him staying out and no caution, I kind of figured, well, NASCAR's not going to throw the caution at all. They're going to leave that tire until they're doing donuts on the front straightaway. Like mm -hmm. they were, they're just going to leave it. But then they threw the caution anyways. And, you know, I think it, they deserve plenty of criticism. I understand that throwing a yellow flag late in a race like that for a tire that got loose, that's not nowhere near the racing surface. I understand that's a really lame reason to throw a caution. And, you know, NASCAR doesn't want to, he doesn't want to force the yellow there if they don't have to. Cause I disagree with that point, Jared. I don't think NASCAR is looking at it at 50 to go versus 30 to go, which is more exciting. I think they were genuinely assuming that Busher was going to pit sooner than he did. And when he didn't, he kind of forced their hand and made him look bad. So, but I don't think they thought of it first. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think that's what they thought at first, but I think that in that moment, knowing what's going to happen, they could capitalize off of it. Like, I, I don't think done, NASCAR they've... had an issue throwing the caution. I think they're fine yeah. with throwing the caution. I just think it was, you know, they, it was they, just the timing of it. I'm just like, wait a minute. It was okay. the timing. That was the problem. But like, you know, because I remember, okay. 
I think it would have been more entertaining having Busher and Stenhouse up there. Yeah, with see, cars that's the thing. having to take the wave around. If they say if they waited three or four laps to throw the caution, which I think would have been reasonable. Yeah, uh, the only people that really would have benefited, I think, at that point were Busher and Stenhouse. Yeah, and even then, there were still already like ten or fifteen cars back on the lead lap. So Busher and Stenhouse would have pit, and they would have restarted twelfth or fifteenth instead of twenty fifth, wherever they had been running beforehand. Well, so. Really- the only the people that got screwed in this were Busher and Stenhouse lost about mm. 10 positions on track than they, that they otherwise probably should have had per NASCAR's historical, you know, race control ling. <laughs> it's just, they usually throw a caution, like immediately if a tire rolls out, like within like five laps. I remember as a kid, like a tire going out on the track on, out on one of these mile and a half what? tracks, instant caution. What needed to happen was like one of Chris Busher's team members needed to go run out on track to get the yeah. tire. And then they would have thrown the caution immediately. He was, yeah, he was probably, brain move. And it was Tyler Reddick's tire, correct? From his team. But, yes. but Chris Busher's team should have been like, I, I think that's our tire. Oh, it's guys. Our tire. oh no, we get it to get it. I'm but they'll be like, get back over here. What are you doing? <laughs> they'll be like, the NASCAR be like, wait, wait, why, why are they running from the turn four side of the track to the turn one side? <laughs> They're going for the tire. They're going for the tire. They're just being good Samaritans. That's yeah. all. Yeah, they, they, they saw a, a fellow team in, in it's trouble. Like, it's like NASCAR couldn't penalize them at that point, right? Well, I think they might. They probably like, would hey, that guy's suspended. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I don't like, know. But... You, ruined, uh, you ruined our plans. Yeah, it's, it's that's happened. The thing is that that's the happened team. before. There were teams, usually to the team that lost the tire, has gone out onto the track. Yeah. That happened, I remember... Somebody got in trouble for that. I don't know. It was probably ten or twenty years ago at this point. They but I went that out happening. like when the cars. They ran out into the speed. yeah, like yeah. they ran out into the infield grass. Like, at, like, I know the cars oh, are far away, something. but still, that's that's an active track. Uh, don't take. The oh yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, that's, that was bad. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> That was so. Bad. I think I remember, so it might have been recently because I feel like I remember hearing radioactive. The official was like David Hoots was like, "What the hell is what going the on? What the hell is going on?" Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know how recent it was, but I don't know. <laughs> somebody fished that for us. But yeah, so that was the Kansas Cup race, the Truck Series race. Um, I was on a flight, so I didn't get to see it, but watching the highlights, that was a crazy re- uh, final two lap, uh, green white checkered. Basically, that was crazy. See Kyle Busch I, come through the field. Yeah, Kyle Busch. Um, he didn't the weekend. Yeah. dominate that race. No, but yeah, he, he kind of struggled on restarts the, 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 cause that race also had a few, uh, late race restarts and he sort of struggled was falling back yeah. further and further. At one point he fell back to like fifth or sixth after leading, but that final restart, everything just worked out. You know, that's kind of how it is. Sometimes you get the right draft, you get the run and you, you're able to get, keep your truck or car st- stuck down in the corner. Um, but no, that was a very impressive restart. It was Chastain. And who was Chastain battling with there? Uh, Austin Hill. Oh, oh, yeah. Austin Hill. And when the two of them got kind of sideways and stuff, it was, it opened the door for, for Kyle Busch, but you know, he, he squoze that truck through a hole that I didn't think existed. So credit to Kyle Busch. That was impressive driving. And he had said after the race and the pressers that he, uh, his transmission just like was not working well. And he still won like, the race. Wow. Sure. Yeah. That was making it hard to shift and stuff. Um, uh-huh. but wait, Oh uh, yeah. Groovy goose brings something else about up about that race really quick. I heard someone stole Norm Benning's truck. Oh yeah. We got to talk about that. His, yeah. his pickup truck, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His race truck. It was like, I don't know which, but they were stuck at the racetrack overnight. Correct. I, he tweeted mm-hmm. that like someone from NASCAR or whatever, like brought them like sandwiches or yeah. like, brought them like food. Damn. Yep. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, that was a really, I mean, I think I even put in our chat that that was a really impressive win from Kyle Busch. Uh, I know it's, you know, yeah, it's a truck series, but just yeah. with, with what he did with an inferior truck, because it was an inferior truck. For uh, yeah, I don't think he had, he, he, so if he'd had the best truck, you would have dominated. So I don't think he had the best truck. Mm. He is all right. He, yeah, he, uh, he's not all right. He, he's, he's good. He's good. He's he was good. good. The man. truck was all right, but he's good. He's always good. But uh, yeah. speaking of good performances too, um, also it was mentioned on Twitter that Haley Deegan was consistently in the top 10. Is that true? And yep. also like, okay, okay. So basically made it as was... high as seventh or eighth. Yeah. Oh, she wow. was genuinely running seventh or eighth. She, she got kind of bit by those late race restarts. She's still not, I don't think she quite has the feel to really go out there and be aggressive. Like the way you need to. And these, you watch Chastain sliding all up and down the track, throwing blocks, sliding like Haley Deegan, I don't think has the confidence to do that. So she will fell backwards. I don't remember where she finished. I think it was around 13th, 13th I think. which I think is still her career best finish now to this point, which yeah, is but still, you something, know, something to mention. But mm. I know a lot of people, you know, there are a few people. I noticed uh, people that we know that we've had on the show as well were, you know, commenting that 13th isn't good. It's not Yeah, great. they were critical of that. I have yeah, mixed feelings on that. But I mean, at least I, she was running in the top 10, though. Well, straight up. That's what I would say. I would look at this and say, here's 
here's a, a sneak peek at what Haley Deegan can do if she gets regular practice time. Because Kansas, this was the first race that she's that she was going back to. This is the first time she's returning to a track for the second time. Remember, she made her debut mm -hmm. last fall at Kansas and finished 16th. No practice, no qualifying. She just ran 16th. This time, she has that race under her belt. Still no practice or qualifying this week, but she goes out and ran, you know, ninth most of the race. So that was a clear. She more than like basically doubled her. her you know, doubled her finishing her running position. So she clearly improved dramatically getting to see a track for the second time. So honestly, I, I this was the most promising. This was by far her best race in her truck series career. The first time where I looked at her and said, oh, she's obviously learning. She's obviously improving. Mm -hmm. Like if she'd gone out there and run 16th again at Kansas, I would have been, oh, that's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. But she clearly improved going to this track for the second time. So I, you know, she needs to work on restart. She needs to work on aggression. She still needs to get a better feel for the truck, a better, you know, social awareness where she's at in the field at a given time, how to work mm -hmm. the air and stuff. Obviously that stuff still needs to be worked on and improved, but the fact that she genuinely ran, you know, ninth, eighth or ninth for most of the race, that tells me that, okay, she's not, you can't call her a bust yet. She's not, she's obviously not, you know, you exceeding can't call her, but you can't even like some think people about are, that yet. Some, some so people are crazy. already writing her off. People, you that's know, people crazy. We're already writing her off. I wouldn't do that yet. She is. How not many truck starts year. has she made so far? Eight. I, yeah, eight, eight, only eight, and, eight. and you're labeling. I mean, her, like, I, we literally have people in the chat calling her Danica. So that's all. That's my point is it's, it's she's, she's, some of the criticism is absolutely fair. We've all talked about we've talked oh, yeah. about how rough she's done it. Like the yeah. Bristol dirt race, she was not a no a non factor. But she's not wrecking trucks on a weekly basis, though. I mean, that's yeah. true. And plus, she's you know, running there's all no the practice neither. I mean, she's not the only young driver to suffer without any any practice. You know, like so next year once we have these practice sessions and qualifying down, I'm quite sure these younger drivers. There's no excuses next. Yeah, year. yeah. There's no excuses like, next year. Exactly. I get a rookie a rookie year. You can have some reasons, and I think there's still reasons why why she's not performing as well as she could. But next year with practice, with experience, the, with the seat time already, I don't think there can be any excuses of why she's not going to run in the top ten on at least a regular or semi regular basis. Yeah, and then, I, but I, yeah, and it doesn't help too. Like like well, and, and like you know, Ty Gibbs. It's awesome to see him run well, but like you know, immediately eighteen years old. So like now the expectations yeah. for these younger drivers and according well, to the fan base a, might be he's, he's a, a great talent that's what i'm saying yeah like not everybody's gonna be a ty gibbs and immediately win you know right away you know what i'm saying like it's you know different levels different levels uh, i think that's true to say like Haley deegan gets a lot of attention because she's a woman who's performed very well in the lower yeah. ranks uh, but mm. at the end of the day there's a sam mayer who's 17 a, a mm. ty gibbs who's 18 like there are teenagers that are obviously better than she is right now yeah. she can certainly catch up and get you know somewhere in that realm i think at some point soon and and going like off what you said there jared i agree i think next year with this being that being her second time at a lot of these tracks getting more practice and qualifying what what this week told, said to me was that next year i think deegan will run top 10 consistently and i think she'll lead laps at some point or another next season and and le legitimately not through like a pit cycle which doesn't happen in trucks anyways with short <laughs> no. stages but you know i i i was impressed we always talk about how coachable she, she seems to be you know i hate to compare them just because they're women but everyone likes to compare her to like natalie decker who has kind of quietly you know sort of mm -hmm. scooted away from nascar it seems but you know natalie decker did not appear to be coachable it sounded like she was hanging on for dear life half the time when she was in a nascar race car mm -hmm. Haley deegan you listen to her radio she's being coached back up the entry you know drive in deeper you run this lane run that lane and we're clearly seeing that you should go she goes to a track for the second time obvious improvement so that that's big i just know like mm -hmm. you know playing like high school sports it was always about what kids what players were coachable that's what people looked for i think Haley deegan is proving that she's more coachable than some of the other you know token or drivers or you know overhyped drivers that we've seen come through the ranks in recent years i think she's clearly more uh coachable than many many of them have been and and don't get me wrong like just because she had this good run I'm not gonna sit here and just you she's know. She's the greatest oh, she... thing ever. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't think it, I don't think even she would argue that no. personally. Um, but more that I'm, I'm not gonna turn around next week if she run you know or this week if she ends up running 24th at Darlington and be like, well, she got better as the race went on. It's like, it's no. like no, you still finished 24th. Like last year at Kansas, she finished what, what 16th is what you said. Mm -hmm. 16th, pretty good for a debut run too. She yeah. ran below that most of the race and and man should get up there at the end whereas this race she didn't deserve a 13th place finish she deserved a top 10 with how she ran it's just her weak spot is a was what you said earlier eric aggression and restarts that that is her glaring blind spot right now that needs to be addressed
And then yep. now, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I was saying yep. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So yep. that so that'll do it for Kansas. Oh, but but before we head out, the ratings, dude. More amazing news in terms of the NASCAR ratings and the news of uh, that category. Jarrett, what were the ratings for this week? Uh, Kansas got a 1.62 rating with 2.739 million viewers, up 26% from 2019, which was a night race. But this one, I will say, did catch my eye um, based on the data that they had uh, of the past five years. It's the most watched Kansas spring race since 2016. So, wow. that's, that's big. That's big. That's big. We never go back those uh, that far nowadays, basically. I just, a very solid, you know, like a 1.6 rating. It's not like amazing or anything, but for a race no. on cable at a kind of, you know, average track, let's say, not not a and fan also, favorite by any means. That's that's solid you, numbers. You also have to take into account the, uh, I believe the Kentucky Derby was uh, over the weekend as well. So yeah, that was the day before. It, yeah, all that stuff. Like, wow. So it went up against some pretty big things. Not bad. It did. It didn't go up too directly against IndyCar, at least. I believe mm. IndyCar, correct, started. And it, started, it started. It started. It started a couple hours before. Yeah, and no. it ended shortly into the NASCAR race. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It, it, it kind of, though, you know, because even if you take away the, oh, well, last last time was a night race, this is a day race, it still is trending up more. And it, it goes along with the trend that we've seen. Like, the ratings at the 500 were atrocious, and the start of the year was awful. It was absolutely awful. Yeah. And it sort of stabilized, and, and it, we, we've seen it kind of getting closer and closer and closer to that midpoint to where it was last year or the last comparable ones. Now it's like... Tw- two weeks in a row is above, so I, I, it's a it's a good sign moving forward. Uh, if they can get this moving, you know, through the month of May up to the Coke Six Hundred, I think then we'll see whether or not this is just a blip or if this is actually something we can really build on. I hope this is sustainable. Hopefully, we see you know more ratings increases like that. I mean, it's obviously got to end at at you know one of these races, obviously. But I mean, hopefully, we can continue that streak for the next few weeks at the very least. But another rating, though, the pole, the famous iceberg pole, and Jared. Even more we, important, we have a what, Jared? A, a new, new, new pole, pole record. record. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Talk about that, man. What, what, what did people think about Kansas? I know. Kansas. Maybe Kansas is a fan favorite. I, I take that back. Kansas is loved by the people. Yeah. I, this it, one surprising. genuinely surprised me. Oh, boy. Like, I'm well, excited. Lay it on well, me. Well, no. Just last week, we had 15.7 thousand votes and this week we had 15.8 thousand votes now yeah I, 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 I get we had an extra day but even so i looked last night during i racing and it was at 15 and a half so it was like right behind it still massive um, that's crazy so that's crazy to me that, that that many people would vote for it with kansas uh the numbers for it 15 percent of you thought this was a great race 50 percent of you thought it was a good race 24% thought it was average, and then 6% said below average, and 6% said bad. Ooh, so looking pretty high yeah. by our standards. At, yeah, look, yeah, it is. And looking at some of the numbers here, this one, um, obviously the most voted. Uh, but I'm looking through, and 65% net approval puts this race at 53rd out of 80 races polled all time. Mm. That's not as bad as I thought. Yeah. It's Right above Back. the 2019 Brickyard 400. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> well, actually, the last couple Brickyards haven't been terrible. You know, that, that track's earned its bad rap a while back. Mm-hmm. And last year's Texas Fall Race. Oh, well, that track sucks. Well, now I can't, no excuses there. That's no. okay. That's not good company to be in. <laughs> and the negativity of 12% puts it right with the 2020 Fall Talladega Race and the Richmond race this year. Wait, did you say 2018 fall town? Day yet? 20. Oh, no, okay. we didn't, we didn't have the poll yeah, at that right. point, oh, which yeah, is probably yeah. for the best. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, of I, all, where, where, where would you guys have put it? I put, I voted good. I put it at like a 70%. I put that's it right, that's exactly what I had it at. I put it at, as average, to be honest. Like that whole tire fiasco, really, I was like, uh. I, I imagine the negative comment at the at the beginning, at the end of the thread here is going to be about the tire. Yeah. But then also, <laughs> Probably, like, yes. like, like, it was weird. Like the cars, yes, it was hard to pass, but it wasn't impossible. Like I kind of like that sort of thing, but I don't know. It's like, 
It had its dull moments, though. It's still just a little bit. The lead car still had a little too clear of an advantage. Yeah. Like they should have yeah. some advantage, but it still it was took uh, early in the race. I think it was Keselowski leading Byron, and Byron was like stuck this far behind him for like fifty yeah, laps. Yeah, it and, was. For you know, at the end of the day, we realized that Byron at the end of the race didn't seem to have that great of a car. So maybe that's all it really was. Like Larson could pass, Kyle Busch could pass, but still, it, it the arrow effect was still there and wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, really quick for getting in comments. Um, this is fourth of five Kansas races ranked. The only one that's above is last year's fall race. So it was better makes than sense. that. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. I agree. And, and out of mile and a half's polled, we've had 23 mile and a half races since the poll started. This race ranks 16th of those 23. Eh, below average. Below that's, average. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's actually below a Texas race. What? what? Which Texas what? race? Which one? The uh, summer one last year. Oh yeah, that, that, that was alright. I, yeah. I don't even remember what happened. Remember what happened Austin there? Dillon won, and then oh in second, yeah, so by they, tire strategy. In other yeah. words, the tires don't wear at all. Yeah. So why did anybody pit? Like, Basically. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some of the comments. Doritos and Mountain Dew got the top comment. Big. Uh, it says quite fitting that KFB's first win of the season ends up being on his birthday and in the Bushy McBush race. That's right. And with the Bush beer car finishing second. And other and other news. Rest in peace, Eric McClure. Oh yeah, that, that was, yeah. yeah we mm-hmm. didn't forget to touch up on that. Yeah, that was sad to see. R.I.P. Jimmy with 48 likes says, "Dude, Jared's crazy win prediction on the NASCAR Week podcast was right." And he gets double points too. Picking Kyle Busch isn't that crazy, dude. dude but I mean, he, he gets for, double points though. He swept the weekend for the yeah, points. You did, you did pick him to sweep. That is a good point. Oh my gosh! So now he's. Uh, out. We'll get into Rudy K. <laughs> Rudy K. says Kyle Busch. Rudy K. Is a basketball interview. player. Rudy K. Oh, not <laughs> Rudy K. No, not no. No. Uh, says Kyle Busch's honest interview. My whole competition was in the wall. I might as well finish the race in one piece. Yeah. That is that is true. That is All the true. fast cars took themselves out. Hamlin wrecked himself. Larson and Blaney. Well, Larson. Anyway, yeah. I am six says fun fact. Kyle Busch is undefeated on his birthday. Yeah, he won yeah, last one two in two. 2009 too. Right? On his birthday weekend yeah. too, because mm-hmm. he swept that weekend too. Wow, so he's, that's crazy. He even sweeps oh, his, is, own, he, he now, sweeps his whole birthday fact. weekends now. That's crazy. Whoa. Multiple. Move the championship to May. <laughs> <laughs> Race. Uh, this is from Recon Forty Seven. Race. Great. Officiating. Awful. Yeah. Accurate. Uh, uh, let's see. Jefferson Donovan says, Maddie D, another top five when he had a 10th to 14th place car. I'll take it. Good uh, restarts. Matty D had a hell of a car, too. That's a, that was a hell of a Dickie Space scheme. He definitely stood well, up. I Just let you know, Matty D is currently in the playoffs at 16th it's gonna wow. be just like last year gonna sneak in without any of us realizing he came he right is, back okay he is 12 points ahead of kurt bush wow kurt bush wow he has struggled yeah that team's falling off yeah, a cliff pretty much yeah, they good. ran well chastain was in the top 10 a lot of this week yeah well chastain was i'm t- but but that one team yeah, yeah kurt doesn't look quite now, as good chastain, that's a whole nother he's already situation. he's already uh booking his tickets to can cancun this winter <laughs> and enjoying retirement i think is what kurt yeah, bush is doing it's probably yeah it's probably uh, let's scroll down here see a few more before we get to the last comment and uh did you do uh isaac pitts better race than last year at kansas so that that's nobody's cool. arguing that yeah nobody's arguing gavin that. adcock says nascar cost larson a race with a dumb caution hashtag uh, oh, wait wait what the caution was again the right call yeah it just shouldn't have come with 35 to go it should have been with like 45 or 50 to go come on so, man <laughs> we would have gotten nothing. we would have gotten a late race restart either way so larson larson cost himself in those final laps when he like chose the wrong lane in the choose like come on man look look, look within <laughs> jackson says and willie b continues his top 10 streak it is at nine right now and Oh. He is the youngest driver to ever have nine consecutive times. How the heck did you find that stat? Dude, That's impressive. You know, a lot of people, they've been waiting for, you know, William Byron, this boy wonder to come into his own and stuff. And now nine straight, he's, he's very consistent. Isn't he second in your uh, Winston Cup standings at the moment? Yeah, yeah, which yeah. again are for fun. Stop taking Yeah, they're for fun, seriously. guys. I don't care if you think it's, oh, it's the real one or, hey, we don't do it anymore. It's just for, it's fun. for fun. Have fun. Yeah uh let's see let's scroll down to the bottom one see what the last comment is i'll read off who said it and you all can guess if it's positive or negative 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 negative. negative. they're gonna tell him that the tire like stole his wife or something it's it's gonna be something really sad from 
You know, I, sh- should I do the second bottom one then? Sure, why not? Why, why well, wait, why not? up a bit? Wait, 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 do the bottom one. Well, wait, we'll do the, the bottom one? one and then read the one on top of it if you want. I guess. Okay, well, I'm just, I, I, I just, because people purposely make it bad just so that they can. Oh, so it is bad. Oh. Okay. No, story. no, no. I'm just saying, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't read it. Oh, okay. But like, <laughs> let's be real. It's probably going to be negative. I just it's love from- that they're always like a full on chapter book. It's like multiple <laughs> paragraphs. That's what I love. I just want to hear the story this week. It's from Caden Lemon. Oh, he's in my strain. No. <laughs> I know. Positive or negative? Negative. Yeah. It's negative. negative. <laughs> this race was BS. <laughs> not not just because of the horrible arrow package. He spelled arrow like an arrow. Oh, but. no. Caden. 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 My man. My boy. You're my NR2003 streets. Come on, man. What are you doing? Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. But because I kind of feel like Kyle Larson was screwed. They waited so long to throw the caution for a tire that wasn't even a safety hazard and should not have been a caution. Larson would have won. Let's see what the reply says. So much negativity. Am I the only person that'll have a positive last comment? And it's from MV Rowner. MV! Dude, he's in my NR2003 streets too. These are a bunch of familiar names I know now. I'm going to start spelling arrow package like, you know, bow and arrow. Oh my God. Well, it is fitting with it being in Kansas City. Mm, You know, like Arrowhead Stadium. Yeah. Should should I read the uh, second to last one? Why not? Why not? I got to scroll back to it because when you go back, it immediately now goes back up to the top. The second to last one, oh, was from MV Rauner. No, oh, there we go. He says, I want to read you guys my favorite poem that I learned from school. Oh, Jeremy, what the <laughs> Should I read it? I, I've not uh, read yeah, How yeah, yeah, it. Might as well. Go read ahead. the poem. We've never known each other for so long. Your heart has been aching, but you're too shy to say it. Oh, Inside, we both, that's what hurts you, we both know what's been going on. We know the game. We're going to play it. And <laughs> what is this? this is song? Right, and, <laughs> and if you ask me how I'm feeling, don't tell me you're blind to see. Never going to give you up. <laughs> oh, never going to let you God. down. I was, I was waiting for never you to start singing. Never going to run it. around and desert you <laughs> never gonna make you cry never gonna say goodbye never gonna tell a lie See, the first line i thought you. it was a poem and then the second one i was I like what is he gonna break into song i, I immediately i'm like i'm like i when are, when are they gonna get it when are they gonna get it i took it a little <laughs> bit because you said it in poem form so i was like because well, well, i don't even great. know the first line of of, of, of um whatever we the got, hell that song's we called got rick rolled folks when it was live on the podcast i'm like i was like waiting i'm like are they gonna are they gonna know and then they yeah, once you started saying i was like oh my god man it's so stupid <laughs> but we appreciate it guys thank y'all so much for and i like how they say copyrighted trust me my singing is not good enough Mm-mm, to be copyrighted nah, they won't they won't they won't claim that nobody and and same for me as well yeah nobody i just thought that we're bringing back old memes tonight big chungus rick roll oh gosh what, yeah. what throwback back man yeah throwback Throw, that, ooh, exactly i love it Stay now, in theme. now let's get off of zoom and go on the wonky google meets or, or because oh. <laughs> hangouts is dead Dead. Or hangouts, yeah, that's right. No, hangouts is dead. Oh, yes, that's right. It is dead. Yeah, basically. So, but um, yeah, that was the poll. Thank you very much. Let's see if we can get to 16k this week. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's see, see if we can get there before we go to Coda. Yes, absolutely. So before we get into the mailbag question, let's talk about this again. We'll talk about this again for a moment. Uh, the next gen obviously revealed yesterday. We had our mega stream. Uh, damn, we peaked at what, like two, two point one people. Two thousand one hundred thirty-four. Wow, that episode is up over twenty-five thousand views. Everyone wanted hey, to, to wow. see the next gen through our lens. That's that was crazy. A lot of fun. Now, this thanks edition, again to everyone who tuned in. Yeah. Now, of course, this edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast won't top that. So, what we'll kind of, you know, it's just it's a doubleheader. It's a doubleheader, folks. But yeah, so let's talk about that for a moment. Um, just Eric, um, uh, just gloss over again uh, your overall thoughts of the next gen from what we've seen so far. I mean, I think the cars look really cool. They look a bit lower, wider. They look sportier. I call. I said they look more athletic. You know, mm. uh, I think we the most of us agreed the Mustang looked really, really good. I also like the Camaro. I thought the Camaro was nice, but the Mustang is the one that's clearly changed the most, at least stylistically, between uh, the Gen Six and the current next gen, but or the upcoming next gen. 
But no, I thought the cars looked great. It was a good short 20 minute live press, not press conference, but just a little show showroom extravaganza that NASCAR threw together. Seems like overall the feedback has been really positive. You know, as far as like specifics behind it, you know, NASCAR is very ambiguous about horsepower, about what kind of spoiler, because I think they, they're trying to drive home the point that, you know, maybe those types of details don't matter as much with the new car. It's more about, you know, the symmetric, the symmetry, the less side force as a result, the single locking lug nuts, the rear arrow diffusion user that's going to help you know, mitigate some of the dirty air effects. It's about much more than just spoiler. I think they understand that fans are going to see spoiler and immediately jump to conclusions. I think it was smart of them to kind of keep that ambiguous yesterday, and it'll still probably be ambiguous for a few more months as they finalize some of those details. But I think the cars look great. I think they're certainly going to drive differently. Will they race better? Obviously, that remains to be seen, but I'm confident that uh, intermediate tracks will be more interesting next year than they have been this year, even if the horsepower doesn't change a whole lot. Mm. Yeah, I have to agree with yep. that. My my big thing is just like how this is going to be moving forward, because uh, we 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 know everything NASCAR wants it to be, but NASCAR again is not going to be like, yeah, so like well, this is good, this is good. But by the way, we have a little of a weak spot at the at the short track. Sorry mm-hmm. about that. But I I think that this car at least being better than the last two generations. This thing does not have to be twisted sister you know the 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 days of of your and all this crap almost cussed almost 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 threw it back to 2018 you were really close um but it just it has to be better than the last two new cars so man something's in my throat tonight um that that's just really my big thing on it. It, it there's hype behind it this is the first major, I think, actually complete culture change whatsoever in NASCAR in decades. Uh, if you look at how much it's going to change because of this car, whether it's behind the scenes, on the racetrack, uh, or even for people in the stands watching, at home watching, like everything for the most part is changing with this. Uh, I'm excited. So I'm very excited about that. That's the thing. I'm I'm excited too, and I just NASCAR for me. NASCAR needs to to, to capitalize on this hype again. Uh, it's venturing yeah. into the unknown for me. You know, just all of the stuff with the diffuser, and you know, a, a lot of like very interesting changes as well. The one lug nut thing. How fast will pit stops be? You know, with that, and then also, um, they even made like uh the window uh bigger too. It's a lot wider. So like. I guess um, if they do decide to officially move, um, you know, allow different number placements and stuff, it won't be as bad looking to me. Wouldn't you agree, Jerry? Yeah, because just the way that the, the front windshield or uh, windows are, it is, they're further back. But also since the cars do seem to be smaller, at least like with how they look, I know that they're not really that much smaller, nah. uh, but it seems like they're they're not as like long in between the wheels. Uh, I don't think it would look too bad. Uh, I did like some of the concepts that Denny Hamlin was getting people uh, to do, having the number move forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do the same thing without it looking weird. So uh, it wouldn't look as bad. Uh, I will give it that. I still don't want it to happen, but if it does happen, it's not going to hurt as much as if it had happened before 2022. Yeah, because I think like when we were looking at these, our like the, our only base was like, oh, it's on the current gen car. Like it would not look good at all on like our current car. But I think with the new car, it uh, definitely has some hope. So we'll see what happens with that. But now moving on to the mailbag question. It's becoming a tradition on the NASCAR week, uh, weekly podcast to read the oh, we, famous. We need more suspend, or, uh, submissions, though, on this, though. We, we yeah. only had a few to pick from this week, and this was our favorite. But again, send your questions yeah, to weeklypodcastguest at gmail.com for a chance to be featured in next week or a future episode. Absolutely. So this I'll type that in the chat. All right, yeah. cool. So this week's mailbag question comes from John. His question is, Hi, what is y'all's favorite throwback paint scheme in the truck, Xfinity, and Cup series this weekend? Appreciate you asking that question. Uh, Eric, why don't you go first? You did a whole video on this, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And I still don't know if I've decided because quite honestly, there were very few, you know, just bombs this year. Pretty much every team did something cool, something interesting, something noteworthy with it. Aside from like 
Stenhouse's team. I really don't think there are any whiffs. That's, that's so hey, bad. I have a theory. They purposely did that to get more more people are talking about that now than if they'd done like a Ricky Craven or a Daryl Waltrip one. I think that's brilliant marketing. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 to true. an extent. Yeah, yeah, you got a point. More people point. are talking about it than any other car this weekend, yeah. aside from maybe what my favorite Xfinity one is. Playing Devil's so, Advocate again. I miss that series. I miss Devil's Advocate. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, it's hard for me to pick a favorite truck. I, I like Derek Krause's old Napa kind of Michael Waltrip style or, you know, just sort of older, older Napa look. I also, I kind of like the wonder bread that Tyler. Anchor That's for me. I'll get that out of the way. That's my favorite. All right. Truck all right. Then I'll move on to Xfinity. I think Xfinity had a lot of Xfinity might've been the best overall this year, but my favorite is goes to Brandon Brown's uh, UPS throwback. Mm. I like Jeremy Clements as well, but the what can Brandon Brown do for you on the back bumper Perfect. of the 68, mm-hmm. that one wins for me. And then as far as the Cup Series, oh, I got to think. I'm drawing a blank on a lot of the Cup Series ones now. Okay, I'm thinking I got a few of them in my head. Um, you know, I like Eric Jones's John Andre throwback that he won with last night in the Pro Invitational. I do like that one a lot. That one looks pretty, pretty good. Oh, come back to me for a second because I got to think about the cup. Okay, I gotta think get, about... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, for mine, the truck one, the Derek Krause one's up there. I'm wondering if they're going to end up being sued. Um, <laughs> but then I, I got to say, for me, it was the one that was like the throwback to, I believe it was like Hornaday or Harvick, the, like the good wrench truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was like, it was like, what was it? Good something. Good else? right. Good, good right. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And I, I actually, I'd like to, uh, my favorite Xfinity was the Daryl Waltrip Gatorade. Forgot about that mm, one. That okay. was the best that's one. good. Yeah. From so, on that. Mine, the Brandon Brown one is definitely up there. Mine is the, uh, I believe, is Josh Berry running the eight this week? Yeah. Because that one. Is, yes. That one that is special. my favorite Xfinity mm. one. Uh, I, I love how they, instead of having, um, the baseball player they have junior and mikey and then my favorite cup one is totally Corey lejoy's car Mm. Uh, that 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 seven car is beautiful and they got they got the right sponsor back too that they do yeah late edition but a very good one there's a lot of good ones this year and then obviously the really bad ones would be the stenhouse debacle and all that stuff like i'm still not convinced that's their paint team like you're pulling our leg, please stop it, dude. Right. We're talking about it. it's beautiful marketing. Yeah, that it's is amazing. True. That is true. I shopped at H E B today instead of Kroger because oh. I was that mad about the paint scheme. It was because so. of the scheme. Like, take my money. <laughs> take my money. Take it. That's I, great. I, I, I don't know if this is my favorite Cup Series one, but I want to throw it up as an honorable mention. Josh Balicki's Burger King car. If you look at that one close, some of the details, like on the contingency panel and stuff, are kind of funny. I really like that yeah, one. It's simple, but I like a pretty good one. But thank you. Appreciate it, John, for sending this week's uh, fan mail question. Uh, appreciate you uh, tuning into the podcast as well. And also remember to send your questions where, Jarrett? to weekly podcast guest at gmail.com send your questions there send as many as you possibly can send more than one you know what we'll read them not i'm not saying we'll read them live but we'll at least read through them yeah we'll read um, through them definitely just if your question is can i be a guest on the show you will not be a guest yeah. on the show yeah we don't, we don't do it we don't do it like that sorry folks we appreciate y'all sending in your questions and we are at that point uh uh, in the show where it's officially time for an ad read. And this NASCAR Weekly Podcast Throwback Edition is sponsored by Lionel Diecast. Make sure to get your official 2020-2021 wave of NASCAR Authentics at a retail store near you. Let's p- uh, put our Ooh. throwback screens up here. That looks really here. good on my camera. That, yeah, it talk does. about that one. Talk about that one for a second. Well, this one's, this one's cool. I usually have it sitting out in the other room because I like to display this one to my you know mm-hmm. few and far between house guests. But uh, Matt Kenseth's 2013 Husky Home Depot car. I got the door barely on camera right there from this car. The real door from this car is sitting over there. So this is a simple one, but I always really liked it, yeah. So this scheme is Kevin Grubb's scheme. It's his uh, most well-known scheme when he raced in the Bush Series. Unfortunately, it's the, I believe, the 11th or 12th year of his uh, passing back in 2009. So NASCAR fans remember him as uh, one of the Bush Series underdogs. So if, you, if you're able to find uh, uh, one of his uh, old diecasts, make sure to snatch it up. I have the race win diecast. From my first ever race I went Mm -hmm. to with my dad back in 2006. I think I was eight years old at that time. Uh, Yeah, I was eight years old at that time. And it is Casey Kane's click car. 
That's a cool one. And, and with it being the race win version, like the amount of detail on this car is beautiful. Like mm. you probably can't see it too well, but inside the wheels, it's a little blurry, but like right in there, you see those two white dots. Oh, wow. It's a nine and a 19 from the Everham crew. That's a good um, detail. Wow. That's a great detail. Well, and they have like left, they have LR and LF nine and same with R, RF and, and RR nine. See, that's what I like uh, about these older ones. That's what I like about these older tires too on these die casts. They even have the whole sticker on there too. Now you probably can't see it too well, but the tires right here on the bottom, they actually made them look more worn and like gray than the rest of the tire. Now that's detail. So yeah, right I, I got this one. I got Dale Jr.'s uh, throwback to his his grandpa. Um, I just need Greg Biffles, and I'll have the entire podium finish of my first race. That's and what's Darian, what's what? Who, who had their first top five in their career at that track? Uh, at that race? I believe it was Reed Sorensen finished P four. Correct? Yeah. Yep. That's right. See, I know, I know a lot. Was about it Greg NASCAR Biffle or was it Carl Edwards? I don't know. I there think were Edwards cars finished up fifth. Front. I think Edwards yeah. did finish fifth. I there believe. were there were Roush cars up front. It was a rain delayed <laughs> race, by the way. It was basically that, canceled, or you know, basically they called the race early. Well, that's when that's when Michigan was just dominated by Roush. Mm. It was like if a car that wasn't Roush won, it was surprising. Yeah, definitely, that's for sure. But thank you so much to Lionel for sponsoring the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. And let me look at the uh, tear. <gasps> oh, that snuck up on me, and I get to use this graphic again. Yes, yes, it lives, it lives uh again. I love how we get the lightning effect, but there's sun hitting you in the face. I know. I know. It's off point. I noticed that there's sun hitting you in the face, and I'm looking outside as the sun is already down. Oh, my goodness. And it's the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Oh, the mic didn't cut out. Nice. Jared, well, what do yeah, we have on Yeah, it's because it was a pretty weak end. But, yeah, yeah, what are you uh, doing, Darian? <laughs> I'll make that. I'll make, all right, I'll make the outro stronger, I promise. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, um, first off, let's get the, the bad out of the way first. Rest in peace to Eric McClure and to Bobby Unser. Mm. Uh, they passed away both this week, uh, so our condolences to their families. Yeah. Um, also, a more positive one, Darlington has a new official ice cream. Proof alcoholic ice cream. What? Or alcohol ice cream. <laughs> Wait, I, it's, it's ice cream with alcohol in it. Uh Okay. <laughs> you remember? You remember? You remember when we hit, went to that one uh, hot chicken place, Darian, and the thing that, that oh, Danny got? Oh, yes. Yeah, so like that's that. Similar. Nice. It's like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. The chocolate. Yeah, that's the chocolate you'll alcoholic be, shake. Let's go. You'll be happy, happy, happy with Very that. Uh, the RTA has ordered a Nielsen study on the potential value of sponsorship yeah, when it comes to moving the numbers, the numbers to the back. <sighs> per Adam Stern. Like, ooh, I wasted my money on that. Yeah, like, what the heck? Wasted your money, bro. Yeah, like, just, <laughs> I, I just <laughs> decide if you want to do it or not. Yeah, just, just ask your like, existing sponsors if it's worthwhile. Like, hey, to hey, them. hey, Jared, you yeah. want to do this? Yeah, sure. Na okay. Hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, Napa. Hey, uh, would you want a number? Would you want your sponsor there? You want to pay like fifty thousand bucks extra? Why'd your no. phone uh, okay. sound like a shot clock? <laughs> sound like some freaking home <laughs> phone from the nineties. <laughs> I was, watching, I, I was watching Jeff Dunham and it was like, uh, uh, Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> they got a buzz his ass in. Um, Dover has approved for 20,000 fans at its race as 37% capacity. Still no word yet on Nashville. Uh, but seeing how, and you know, we'll talk about, well, I'll just talk about it now. Seeing how Pocono and Atlanta are 100% capacity. I don't see any reason why a state as open as Tennessee shouldn't have 100%, but that's yeah. just me. Uh, NASCAR on Rocket League has arrived. I got to play that. Uh, I'll, play. I'll be streaming that to late tonight after this, actually. You, so you if are? I, you, I am, yeah. Oh, dang it. I got to get my pack. Dang it. Get Eric, it. Get it. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll be playing it a bunch this weekend, so we'll get the chance to oh, do some more. But yeah, yeah. I probably should get it. Small, small self plug at like 930 Central Time, so 1030 Eastern yeah. Time will be going live. I don't know how late we'll go. I just want to give it a try. First impressions. I finally have some money back on my Venmo card again. I can use that. I don't have to use my <laughs> Devin one. <laughs> I probably actually have to get that I now. Got, yeah, get I that. never played Rocket League before. I kind oh, of try. So I try. I tried it. I try to skip out on the trends, but seeing how NASCAR is there, I got to go it's for fun. it. Matt Benedetto is running his throwback in the Southern 500. Uh, so that's kind of an, uh, I think it was a sponsorship deal, mm. but okay. 
more promotion is uh starting up right now to bring Na- to bring nascar back to north wilkesboro um, uh they have different things popping up all over the place and marcus lamona seems to be i mean he's all but said he's gonna back anything even maybe. at like their like town hall they were even putting in banners and stuff like so they're serious they really want racing back there it's been gone for way too long props i mean like i said i am fine being proven wrong on this one yeah like, it's just people... for years we've been you know told you know multiple things it's like and it never happens you know so hey if it happens it happens well we love that yeah uh rafael lassard is out at gms sounds like from Funding. all accounts the funds dried yeah. up yeah yep. he's still focused on 2022 he's hoping to get back into nascar next year yeah uh, the NASCAR Hall of Fame has purchased Alan Kowicki's 1992 Underbird and plans to restore it and put it in the hall. Oh, so, where'd, they, where'd they buy it from? Where was it? Yeah, where was I think it's it uh, friends and family of his, like, or someone had had ownership of oh, it. So like they a, bought it off. It was of in like some Hooters somewhere, like like hung up by this in the ceiling, and they had no idea what it was. Oh, wait <laughs> a minute. Like an, you know, it's been, it's been locked up in a New York Hooters. Wait, it's hold like, on. Why, why is that Hooters car? And that's, so, that, so I that just thing's realized, really detailed. I wow. just realized something. There's a casino out here in Las Vegas that has, like, this giant Hooters. And outside of it was Alan Kowicki's car. They claimed that was the championship car. Liars! Liars! You lied to me. Uh, this is some good news. Derek Lancaster has been released from the hospital. They, there was a picture of him and his wife walking to their car. So That's good. Good that's to a, hear. That's really very good. good. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is running the Xfinity race at Richmond on September 11th. We'll run a commemorative scheme for those lost on that tragic day, seeing how it's going to be the 20 year anniversary of 9 11. Uh, this is according to JRM. Okay. Yes. Wow. Uh, Jordan Anderson, Bailey Curry, Timmy Hill, and BJ McLeod have changed their series to where they earn points from Xfinity to trucks. Kaz Grala has changed from earning cup points to truck points now, according to Bob Pachris. Yeah. Uh, this this is a big one. This is a big one right here. No one's talking about. Hillary Swank will play Janet Guthrie in a feature film. Uh, if what? you don't know what? who. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I didn't know uh, about this. What? Yeah, I didn't know this was being made. What's going on? What? And for those who might not know who hillary swank is if you've watched the movie a million dollar baby it has clint eastwood where she's a, a boxer mm-hmm. or an yeah. mma fighter yeah. awesome movie that she's a great. great actress perfect person in my opinion to play there's also like a whole b plot in an episode of the office where they uh tried to determine how attractive hillary swank was <laughs> remember that that was a weird. B I never plot. watched that was, the Office. That was one of the seasons ago. where the where the writers ran out of ideas. But I've seen Million Dollar Baby though. That's a good one. Also, another good one uh, with Hillary Swank in it is I, I believe it's called Freedom Writers. Yes, really, really yes, movie. dude, I grew up on I, that. I love that. Movie. I, love that I movie. love that movie, man. Yeah. Uh, I love that whole story too. Like yeah, it's just awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, and then last one here. I am athlete mm-hmm. is to have a NASCAR partnership starting yeah. May 10th yeah. with a show called I am NASCAR. First special guest, of course, being Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dude. Who's hosting it? So, so it's all Brent, Brent, Brent Marshall, Marshall, Chad Johnson, Fred yep. Taylor, uh, uh, Crowder or Chowder or whatever, whatever his name is. Basically. Outer. Outer. I don't know. So, basically, so, so basically the entire uh, show came uh, to Charlotte, I think uh, a uh, a few weeks ago, because um, uh, B Marsh he was on uh, Dale Jr.'s podcast for uh, um, an appearance, and uh, they also um, I guess rode around Charlotte um, the the entire Charlotte Motor Speedway, and then they got to see the pit crews change. So it's like a whole show basically dedicated to NASCAR. Okay, I want to. Uh, or I, 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 I an episode, an episode. Excuse me. Is it just one episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one episode. Yeah, yeah. This is what they do. I think that's kinda, what they kind of go like across like other sports and stuff. That makes more sense because in my head that's I'm thinking there's no way show. there's no way Brandon Marshall and and all those guys can can. Uh, no, hang, it's a hang, special hang, edition. The, yeah, so. that, 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 like I'm sitting here thinking like why on earth would they get Chad you know, Ocho Cinco to host a NASCAR show for more than no, 20 minutes? No, no, that, no. That, that right. doesn't sound like it'll work. I get the I, audience. I get you're trying to break into a new market there, but like. I want to. I want to ask here. Right. I don't know if this is verified or not, um, but I'll take your word for it. Sprint ninety nine eighty eight says at Iceberg Cup tickets gets you into the Xfinity race at Richmond. They are a double header day. Oh, One day, all the race. That's big. That would be the biggest big. crowd in Xfinity race in a long yeah, time. I'm. I'm. 
man, I might go. Man. I haven't seen Junior race in person since Chicagoland 2017, and that was not fun. That's hey, spoiler alert. At this rate, I'm picking him to win that race. Yeah. He led 96 laps and finished fourth there three years ago. Yeah, I I, he's my pick that. to win. I thought Just he was going to win that one. That was crazy. But, yeah. So, so, appreciate you guys. All right. Do your thing. And once again, that'll conclude the lightning round on the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. And now, back to the show. And speaking of which, another, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another ad read, Eric. <laughs> Before we get into those, I love what you point them out. I just like how ad read. Darian announces everything. It's like, <laughs> and welcome to the show. And that's like, and welcome to the poll. And welcome to the lightning. And welcome to the Dude, ad. I'm going off the itinerary. I'm like, I don't want to screw up. You don't have to just... tell them that we have a. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Everyone, I have to let everyone them know. Everyone watching. Because we're just lifting the whole curtain here, we all have a Google <laughs> Doc open that we all can see. It has basically our list of things, and then so that's I just what. See ad. I'm like, okay, read your ad. That's it. And it, in right now, in in the itinerary in the Google Doc, it says up next <laughs> Forney ad read, and it has my name listed, so I know that I'm supposed to read it. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you to, in all in all seriousness a big thank you to foreign industries they've been long <laughs> I tried to transition out of the groove it was terrible. and uh and they've converted their support into the entire out of the groove podcast network including the nascar weekly podcast so this episode is brought to you by foreign industries if you need <laughs> any sort of welding equipment plasma cutting machines anything like that or any sort of metalworking accessories forney has what you need check them out uh, at their website Forney end Forney ind.com or at an authorized Forney dealer near you Forney industries get it done with green big thank you to them for supporting the podcast that'll conclude an ad read <laughs> so what's the next thing on the itinerary uh <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, I'm done. I'm done, man. All right. And now, welcome to the first Super Chats. And now, Super Chats are next. (laughs) Let's get right into them. Really appreciate y'all sending in these Super Chats. So let's see. (laughs) Where's my (laughs) Super Chats? Where's my Super Chats? If it'll refresh. Come on, YouTube, refresh. You're messing up all day. Okay. All right, so now let's get into them. I got to scroll all the way to the bottom. There we go. Okay, so... Irvin Alvarado, thank you so much for the $5 Super Chat. Hey, Colton, great win at St. Pete's. Where does your team stand in month of May? Good luck, dude. Oh, sorry I didn't get to that question. But, um, I mean, just from speaking to him, he seems very confident about this month, too. I mean, already has his win or, you know, already in the bank. Uh, heading into Indy, so perhaps win number two could be the Indianapolis 500. We'll see. Do they have playoffs in Indy? <laughs> Please don't IndyCar. I swear you, you have. Awesome I just like I like I like messing with IndyCar fans. I'm Please sorry. Don't. I like messing with any fans. It's yeah. just y'all make it too easy. Basically, <laughs> Ruby Goose. Thank you so much for the two bucks, Eric. Does Kansas bring back bad memories? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. just letting you know, we just got our the first time this season that this guest has popped in. The fly is back. Hey, Darian, hype up the fly. The fly. It's back. <laughs> That's not on the itinerary. (laughs) The The famous iceberg fly. (laughs) Pierston Frills. Pierston Frills. Thank you so much for the five bucks. Just wanted to ask you guys uh, uh, to keep um, uh, William Byron's uh, mom in uh, in your prayers. Cancer sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Whoa! 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 Craig! What happened? The fly? No, $99. $99 super chat. Oh, my goodness, Craig. Craig. Thank you so much, Craig. Great plug, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so Loving much. Loving that stuff. That's what's up. Thank you so much. That Craig. super chat wasn't on the itinerary. It wasn't on the itinerary. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I appreciate it. Jake Alcor, thank you so much for the five bucks. Um, should have had Danny B there with his fishing rod. 100% could have hooked that tire real quick and reeled it in. No caution needed. <laughs> Oh, I wish he was here. He would have loved that. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I just meant that Danny B and Tyler X. Hang on, I got this, boys. I got this, boy. I can hear his voice. <laughs> yeah, That's so like... funny. Wait, the guy, what's the name of the guy that does the cartoons? The, uh, the, oh, 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 I follow him. I follow him. We got to get him. He needs to do like we'll edit one in there with Danny B <laughs> yeah. trying to fish for the tire to get it back over the pit wall. That's uh, so funny. You really need That's to. So good. And thank you so much to the Blue Jimmy 48 fan <laughs> for becoming an official BFM channel member. We're almost the 20. 
Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> Justin James, thank you so much for the five bucks. Kansas needs to come back to wreck Harvick. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Harvick's getting a lot of hate. He was getting a lot of hate yesterday. Is this the same guy from yesterday? Is this the same guy? I think it's the same guy. <laughs> Yeah, what's his deal? He oh, just lives to troll Harvick. He does not like Harvick at all. Uh, Platinum Paradise, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. What's y'all's predictions on what teams nail the next-gen cars first, performance-wise? I mm. think Stuart Haas will make uh, their official return to relevance next year, I think. Mm. I think they're holding that, back. Perhaps. Um, Hendrick. I think it'll be yeah. Gibbs. Gibbs figured out the Gen 6 before everybody. Mm. I know this car is not anything like that, but I figure if they did they it once, track record. Yeah. maybe they can I, do it again. I'm going Hendrick on this one. Yeah. So let's see. St. Denny, thank you so much for the five bucks. Did anyone else notice the Darlington iRace that some of the drivers were shifting in the turns? I really hope yeah. that translates to real life. I mean, there are five gears now, so I, it wouldn't surprise me. Maybe shift to fourth gear, then back to fifth gear to aim more I could, speed in the corner. I, I don't some know. Some of the short tracks, especially, could that be a possibility? Could, like, I, are there some, like at Martinsville or even Bristol, will they even get to fifth? They probably will, Bristol. I don't know about like Martinsville. I feel like they'll shift at Martinsville. Yeah, so that's another interesting factor. Some of these, you have to shift extra, possibly in these corners. So yeah, we'll see. At least on iRacing, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, Rowdy18 underscore diecast. Thank you for the $2. Almarola finished behind the destroyed 20. Oh, Almarola, what are you doing? Oh, just having a terrible <laughs> season. Nicholas Gray. Oh, I see what he did here. Uh, I see what he uh, what he did here. Thank you so much for the eighteen dollar fifty one cent super chat. Uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle winning. Ty Gibbs winning. Good weekend. Yep, uh, that a boy. That's right. Platinum Paradise. Thank you once again for the two dollar super chat. Hopefully, we don't get a twenty thirteen Daytona five hundred repeat. Now, I did mention this. Don't be surprised if we do. I mean, like this is the first race and. Uh, they're not going to wreck these new expensive cars exactly you know? they're not going to risk it all just I, I know the 500 is important but the entire season that's what uh, really matters so uh, don't be surprised if we have a 500 like that i'm i'm ready for it it'll be cool to see these next gen cars on the track though at that's least cool. we'll get a road course race the week beforehand with the bush clash that'll exactly. be kind of yeah exactly hopefully and bryce willie thank you so much for the 10 bucks huge stenhouse fan here oh <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> Sorry about this team. Um, at this point, oh. I assume he has to win to make the playoffs with how many winners are there. Um, how... Has he fall... He's fallen out of the top 16 now, I yeah, think, right? Yeah. 19th minus 18 yeah. tied to Ty mm. Loretta. After an awesome yeah. start, he had that happen. How likely do you think his chances are? Love your guys' podcast, by the way. Well, thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, very kind. I would assume he'd probably have to win on the uh, super speedways, you know, like one of those. Yeah. I Luckily, mean, where else? Daytona is the season finale, so. There's a, there's a second race in Atlanta coming up, and historically, for whatever reason, he's always really good at Atlanta, mm -hmm. so I, he might surprise us there, perhaps. Yeah. I doubt it, but he could. He'll be in contention in the top ten, maybe. His first career poll was there too, so yeah. you never know. He's he's got to win, and uh, mm. I th I think that you know he's still within. If if nobody below him wins, then he's still within that range to get in yeah. on points. So I mean, I, I I still don't think it's unrealistic for him to get off in off of points, but. Mm -hmm. I, I think the chances are diminished since falling out. I mean, he keeps, I mean, he, he just needs to put together these finishes like he was. I mean, now, like, what is this, two straight DNFs now he's had, I think? Mm -hmm. He's had yeah. two rough races or in a row. Yeah, yeah. damn, and it just shot him right back outside the top 16. So we'll see what happens with that. And <laughs> the Fido Super Chat from Michael Roots. How's it going, man? Thank you so much for, for the $2 Super Chat. This is for one of those NASCAR Weekly Podcast shirts, Jarrett LMAO. <laughs> oh, I mean, I got them on my Teespring store. I have I have the old ones, I think, still mm -hmm. up. If yeah. they're not, I can put them back up. Uh, so he has and them then up we got the we got the new uh, the new logos up for sure. Nice. Uh, so there's plenty of them on there. You just go to my Teespring store. I tried to make them. I try, I I made them as cheap as I could with them also being like the premium made ones, so they mm -hmm. don't fall apart really easily. Because for some reason, the ones that aren't fall apart really easily nowadays. So mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. Another another plug. That wasn't on the itinerary. That wasn't it... on the itinerary. It's not on the itinerary, so it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, we should probably move on because Fibonacci Blue asks, what is next on the itinerary? Yeah, I was just about to say, it's uh, we're done with Super Chats. Thank you guys so much for sending y'all Super Chats. And now back to the show once again. And next on the itinerary, uh, it says, Atlanta Motor Speedway and Pocono Raceway will be running at full capacity um in june in their june and july races so uh, i know jared's obviously happy about that um just another uh, step back to normalcy isn't it 
Yeah, it's it's a surprise. The Pocono one surprises me mm-hmm. because I know we've been in contact with some of the people at Pocono just in general because we were on their show. They uh, weren't during- really sure. Basically, yeah, and they from- up until literally just a couple weeks ago, they still seemed to be thinking that maybe fifty percent was going to be the best they could possibly get. So to see things opening up quickly and hopefully you know safely as more and more vaccines continue to roll out, uh, you know, I think. I mean, that's great news. I think that's <clears throat> fantastic news. Uh, if I wasn't busy that weekend, I would love to go to Pocono for a doubleheader. I think that's a great opportunity to see that uh, beautiful area of the country and beautiful track in person. Racing may not always be top notch, but at least it's a, a nice area, I suppose. And the weather in the summer, I'm sure, will be more mild than it is where I'm from. So, I mean, yeah. hopefully next year Pocono works out. But this is a great step in the right direction. I'm happy about it, man. I, I think this is going to be like, just ripping off the bandage finally and, and getting most of these places um, basically right back to, to, to where we should be. I, definitely by the end of the year. I mean, um, like Irvin Alvarado says in the chat right now, you know, the Glen could possibly be a hundred percent seeing how New York state July 1st is opening to a hundred percent. Illinois is, you know, and they, and they've been, pretty freaking terrible this whole time is opening up they're to terrible all together man <laughs> illinois just sucks i hate it, we're, we're we're best at one thing and that's having people move out of our state yeah. and um, good pizza and corrupt politicians but good pizza <laughs> yeah good pizza though <laughs> Oh yeah, Come Eric, Illinois, likes, Eric loves that deep dish stuff, right? Don't I got some some in my fridge. My dad orders pizza from like Gino's East and Giordano's, and he'll I buy, gotta like, try this. Them, I gotta and try they'll be shipped stuff. to him in like a cooler, and he'll just like slowly eat them throughout the year. And he gave me a slice. <laughs> we'll uh, maybe maybe when you all come up here, we'll we'll uh, stop by a pizza place. We'll just go to time when we probably won't get shot. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. Shy Town, Shy Town for a reason. But but moving back to to what we were talking about. Um, no, no, we're not going to Chirac. No, um, <laughs> no uh, I I am incredibly happy about this. I think that by the playoffs, like we've kind of heard a bit of uh, from people that we've talked to, by the playoffs should be pretty normal. Uh, it's looking like, you know, NASCAR is basically, with the, it's up to the tracks at this point. Uh, as long as the governments allow it, the tracks can go and get it. So. Nice. Uh, for for full capacity, so I'm I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. I really might go to the Atlanta race. I, I was I was a hundred percent going to when it was the first one, uh, but I am definitely now. Uh, I, I might have to roll back on that. But man, I I just I want to be in a full full uh, track. Yeah, we <laughs> I don't have words, man. I'm excited. Track. I'm happy. The I'm second happy. question is: do you, Will Pocono or Atlanta even hit full capacity? No. I doubt it, but they'll get, they might get <laughs> no. close. I think. I think. I think Pocono they'll get close. being a double header, yeah. and I think that will. I think people will be excited, especially that area of the country, to to have that kind of open, you know, ability to go to an outdoor event like that. I think that one might. How many do they seat? Like seventy thousand. You yeah, might see. You might see fifty k in the stands for mm. both races. I know that Pocono had like been way ahead on ticket sales before the pandemic hit last year. So I'm wondering, like, people are hearing about this now and they're just like going gung ho into it because it, even though the races like compared to other races weren't the greatest, they still weren't bad and they were pretty enjoyable. The truck race was awesome, mm. uh, and the Xfinity cars at Pocono is amazing. Like I don't, I don't know what the Xfinity series got completely right there, but it reminds me of like pre 2015 Pocono with all of the Cup cars. Like, like it, it is just awesome, bomb ass racing. Yeah, that series, series and track combo really surprised me there. I'm like, it's I, great. I, I enjoy it. And I enjoy those ones. Well, heck, and and Ryan was uh, almost. I mean, he was running for a top five at the end of that race he before was. his car got tight at the yeah, end. Yeah, so. he was there. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm excited to watch a Pocono race with Xfinity. I love it. I can't wait. And really quick, uh, yours truly, Chris, thank you so much for officially becoming a BFM channel member. I think it, I think now we um, we have officially 20 uh, channel members, so another milestone. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah. And next up on the itinerary. See, I just love saying the itinerary now. Itinerary. The itinerary. 
Motors. I want to see. Games. Do, do you have okay. Do you have custom um, uh, emotes, uh, Darian? I do. Your... I added them. Yeah, I added. I want to see them. I, we have at least a couple members watching. Yeah, yeah. I put see some. These. Put some in the chat, folks. Put them all yeah. in the chat. I have a is black it, flag, it, of course. A Artist, green flag. Are, 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 is it your face on there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah both me, of them. I have two. Give me your face. I want to see some Darians in the chat. Yeah. So a bunch of them. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. What about motorsport games? No, dude. So we we transition on into the world of NASCAR gaming, and it's amazing news here. So, ah, oh, this itinerary is not pulling up. Okay, there we go. Motorsports Games completes acquisition of Studio uh, 397 and confirms it will bring R Factor 2 powered physics to the new NASCAR console games. Now, I, I, you know, obviously, I'm of the mindset I'll believe it when I see it and stuff, but just hearing this news alone, now my expectations are just off of the very base of this new NASCAR game alone that um, compared to the Heat series, completely night and day. Well, I know Jared's been uh, Jared's been positive yet critical of the game as well. Jared, what are your thoughts on this acquisition? Well, my thing is, you know, like I said, I've been extremely critical uh, of anyone on YouTube. I think I've probably been the most critical of the Heat games, and I think it's rightfully so. Like five straight years of between mediocre to garbage is is still not good. But with that being said. I also said I will 100% go back and and play this series or this rebooted series if it's good. This sounds like it'd be pretty good from what it sounds like. I mean, if I've heard that the tire model especially oh, is that's, really Oh, that's good. like the best part, apparently. That's the best and part, it, according to them. And you know what? That was one of the worst parts of the Heat games. Mm -hmm. So if right there, that along with even better physics, because once I got to Heat 4, the physics weren't horrible. Like yeah. I think it got over exaggerated, and I I admit I over exaggerated a bit on that, um, but I'm telling you what I don't know if it'll be on PS4 or if I get a, a next gen console, uh, but I will get this game if I find out it's really awesome, and I will 100% sing its praises. I am I'm really excited. I'm cautiously optimistic because I'm not going to go gung ho into it thinking it's going to be the greatest thing ever. And it's, it's not, not going to be it's perfect. not going to be Thunder O four yeah. with the first go round like this. Yeah, it's not. Gonna I be expect perfect. that. Yeah, it's going to have its glitches every now and then and stuff. But just yeah. the very base, yeah. though, I think NASCAR fans can finally, you know, excel. Like, finally, I'm looking if, forward to a NASCAR console release for the first time in how long, you know? Having, having, a, and I think it would make the console community a lot more healthy for NASCAR. Because right now, I mean, it's like it is mm. infested with trolling. Yeah. To a point where they are are actively going after And it. also, like, you know, uh, fellow YouTubers such as IDK Player, Michael Maroots and stuff, like, these guys have... Have limited uh, the amount of times they stream on heat on the ps4 and also including myself because yeah the troll situation is just so bad so finally Real they're gonna address that in the next games hopefully just really quick for people asking because i saw fisha ask it uh we're not involved at core anymore no so no we're not if, yeah if yeah. we do something it's gonna be for fun we yeah. ain't doing points okay. we're not doing anything we're gonna have fun you, with it y'all know what i do with the streams on heat and stuff so once this i'll be down with that out, yeah we're gonna be doing streams like that just impromptu streams and stuff so but yeah, yeah nothing serious like that that's cores in the past that was a different era basically <laughs> but i'm i'm excited i'm I mean, really excited if, if, that's my one word right there is excited uh, yeah I don't. I don't really know how to feel about. It. Like, I think it's. This sounds really good. It sounds like they're bringing all the pieces together to make a really good, well-rounded, functioning NASCAR console game. Because you know, that's just what I want. I'm excited about this Rocket League integration because that's a super popular game. But that's all cosmetic stuff. I want to see a really well-made, built from the ground up nascar console game that looks like it belongs in 2021. You know, or whatever. I, like that's what I want to see because that's what we haven't seen. I, even the Eutechnics games are you know hit or miss. Some of them are good. The last yeah. couple I did not like. Honestly, since EA had the had the brand, and you know EA sure yeah, that was so long issues. ago. Man. They they have their issues, but at least EA back with those NASCAR Thunder games and even like up to 09. When was their last one? 09, I 09, guess. 09, yes. Well, like, well, yeah. well, 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 well. Technically, it was the NASCAR karting game for the Wii. That was technically their last we, game. We'll yeah. we'll ignore that one. Yeah, Aside we'll from that one, EA Sports, you know, they they built a solid game, solid games that also were able to reach mass audiences. And, you know, credit to 704 Motorsport Games, they're a much smaller operation. They've done pretty impressive work with the limited resources they've had, but NASCAR is a big brand. It needs to be able to reach like all three of us 
you know, our NASCAR fan fanaticism was largely fostered by the, the beauty of it those. It was early solely NASCAR fostered Thunder by NASCAR Thunder. The NASCAR so Thunder I, I, I just think having a really well-functioning um, console game, NASCAR console game is huge for the growth of the sport going forward. So I hope this, this new physics model type stuff they're importing in, I hope it runs and plays really well. I hope it's easy to pick up and, and get the hang of and, and it's fun to play. And I know people like say graphics don't matter in video uh, games, but quite frankly, the game needs to look like a 2021 video yeah, game. Like NASCAR yeah. heat games did not. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. Everything I've seen so far from the graphics packages to the physics packs, to all that stuff, it sounds really great. Um, but we'll just, you know, we, we don't even know the name of the game yet for sure. So it still sounds like it's, you know, a ways away from being a complete product, but I'm, I am excited for it as well. I'm with you guys kind of cautiously excited. Right. All right. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. What's next on the itinerary? On the itinerary, it's the Darlington Preview, a.k.a. <laughs> race picks. Now, let's go over um, each of the uh, of the races taking place. It's throwback weekend, so we have a triple header. Um, on Friday, you can catch the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you can uh, watch it on FS1 or listen to it on MRN for Saturday. A 1 p.m. Eastern time start for the Xfinity series. You can also watch that on FS1 and listen to it on MRN. And finally, the main event, the Cup, the, uh, the Cup Series throwback race, uh, begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And once again, you can watch it on FS1 or listen to it on MRN. So there you go. And then also some weather previews as well. And, uh, oh, add a boy to Jarrett there. He's uh, becoming our uh, weatherman, basically. So pretty much it's uh, looking to be um, sunny throughout the weekend. Um, our highest chance of rain comes on Friday night, uh, with that being 25%, but a uh, 10% chance of rain for Saturday and Sunday. So it's looking very promising. It's uh, going to be hot. Yeah, it's going to be very hot. 75, 78, and 87 are supposed to be the highs for that day, for uh, for those days, excuse me. And then limited attendance, too. I think we just said Darlington, uh, 20,000 for the cup race, correct? No, that's Dover. That's or Dover. Dover. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Dover I think Darlington's right. like a certain percentage yeah, um, so they're based off whatever okay so uh, yeah they're gonna do like one of those percentage but, deals but. darian would you would you do me the honor of of reading off the the points oh, right now oh my this gosh. is crazy so this is a yeah. crazy point situation it was yeah. really close but uh jared tell him what you did no you i want you to oh my god so he you're picked, the host he picked kyle bush and he won twice. He swept, so he gets double freaking points. Are you kidding? Well, yeah. So, so yeah, we got. So you get six points for the highest pick in trucks and ten for the highest pick in cup. I got those. So that's sixteen right there. Mm. You get a bonus point for winner in the truck race. I got that right there. Plus another five in cup. Plus ten for sweeping the weekend. So, uh, yeah, I'm in the wow. lead. He's in the lead. He and got. Well, he literally doubled his season total of points, yeah. pretty much in one race, in one weekend. Like, this is I'll put it like. I'll put it like this. I was third going into this weekend, and yeah, I you was have a double 12, digit lead. I was twelve points behind Eric. Now, Darian, you want to you want to read it off? Because I'm sorry, it, it's not very often when somebody not only because Eric got two cup wins in a row, but it's not but very I often was, when he sweeps the damn weekend. Yeah, so I was now Jared, away, not Jared, anymore. Jared, Jarrett has 159 points in total and has a, a slight 11-point cushion lead over Eric, and I say slight in a sarcastic way. That is huge. That is it's a 23-point swing yeah. in one week. Good Lord. It's all because my boy Larson butchered the, that restart, Pretty or else he much. had it. He had it. <clears throat> but, yeah, Eric's second, and in third is the chat, minus 17 points behind. Danny B is fourth, minus 21 points behind. I'm in fifth. I, I I was just competing for the points lead like a couple weeks ago, one point behind Eric, and now I'm sitting minus 25. Like, I, what Things happened? Things happen fast. Hey, but, you're not uh, as bad as the guest. Yeah, at least I'm not the guest, though. Minus 47. Oh, and we forgot to ask Colton his picks. Dang it. We keep forgetting, <laughs> we keep forgetting to ask the guest oh, their D picks. DM, DM him or somebody else, and we'll go from there. All right, all right. Yeah, I'll DM him. <laughs> Stuff. But, all right, let's go. Oh right, my let's gosh! Get to it. I need to get the I need to get the truck entry list up really yeah, quick. Get the truck entry. I was just list looking to make sure there are no cup regulars in it, and I do not believe that there are. Mm -hmm. And Corey I know Heim that, is in the fifty-one. But there's no really? um, there's no Cup Series regulars in Xfinity apparently as well. So yes. that's a that's a that's a plus. That's a plus there. So we'll start with trucks. Who wants to go first? I'm still looking for the entry list. I'll go, I'll go first. I'll go or, first. Yeah, you go first. Go ahead. I'll go first. I don't have a super exciting pick. Yeah, you know, I really don't know who to pick for trucks, but I'm going to go with John Hunter Nemechek. I just think he's 
they got the most not necessarily the most experience but i think combination of fast truck talent and experience i'll go with him he's also starting on pole and i think that will be oh, key yeah, especially huge. avoiding any early carnage at a difficult track so i'll go with nema check for the truck series hmm. see my thing is do i want to go with nema check or do i want to go with like someone who maybe toyota can... hasn't lost yeah, that's what Not i'm yet. saying so mm. Uh, you ready, Jared? Are you ready, Jared? Or no? Um, um, oh, this I'm is the triple truck challenge week. That's why there's no cup guys okay. alive. Uh, I still, I, I still can't find it, man. All right, all right. There's See, so I'm like, stuff. I'm kind of confused on my pick too. Let me pull up my thing on here. I just, I just go to the NASCAR app. This yeah, is one of the few things it's good at. I'm just gonna oh, go I, up I, to I the starting that. lineup. <laughs> oh, he doesn't. You don't have, have the NASCAR. <laughs> I mean, it's broken it's, sometimes. Yeah, I, it's I garbage. Yeah, well, it's, but it's good for this. Good it's all right. Oh, they entry. have the entry list up at least. Oh, oh, you know what? Chandler Smith gets his first career truck Ooh, series win. That'd be, that'd be impressive. There. Yeah, Chandler Smith. I'm going with him. He showed me a lot at Richmond. Finally, he's starting to perform well. So, yeah, Chandler Smith. The chat might already be picked Nima check. <laughs> I, th- I think I'm going to I think I might swing that way too, right, man. so Iceberg Nima check is... And it looks like the chat. Yeah, they're picking Nima check here. It looks like. And, and then you got Smith. Okay, they got Nemechek. Well, <laughs> Danny also got John Hunter. Oh, boy. Okay. So there's that. Now, uh, do, do have you DM'd anyone to get a guest pick? Uh, I did. I DM'd a couple people. Still no response. So I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll just kind of have to pick. I, I don't know. Norm Benning. Who said that? Did you hear that? Somebody said Norm. Norm, Norm think, Benning. What? Norm Benning. <laughs> Norm Benning for the guest pick. pick. <laughs> now, the guests are so far behind. Give them, like, I don't know. Give them Nemechek. <laughs> give them just give them Nemechek, basically. Give them Nemechek. They can't gain anything on us. Dude, they're so far behind anyway. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> all right I, I guess i can give yeah. them i'll give them well th- th- then they at least won't lose points yeah exactly exactly okay so for xfinity eric who do you got <laughs> i know oh you. i'm gonna regret this one. Oh, i think i know too because that might be mine <laughs> go for it so it's a difficult racetrack you know it's darlington no practice or anything like that uh, I should probably, you know, I mean, I guess Briscoe, who won one of the races last year, is not in it. Neither is Chastain, who is up front. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I can't, you know, there's not a lot of young guys in this field, but screw it. He's starting 29th. Tie freaking. <laughs> <game>. <laughs> God bless it. That was going to be mine. You can't go wrong with that. He hasn't finished Man. worse than fourth. <laughs> uh, He's rocking well, that uh, interstate batteries throwback, too. He is. Yes. He that is. is that, that's a, that's a hot attack. Dig. I, I want to go. I, I'll, I'll be real. I don't think Ty Gibbs is going to win this race, but I want to root for it. And I'm going to laugh so hard if it happens. I'm picking him anyways. I, I'll be shocked if Ty Gibbs runs top five mm. at Darlington. See, I'm trying to get a point swing here, too. So now I'm playing strategy, too. Do I want to pick Ty Gibbs or do I want to pick someone else? So let me. Um, uh, this is going to be a huge swing. I'll just go with. Uh, Let's go with Austin Cindric. Yeah, let's go with Austin Cindric. I feel like that's a pretty safe okay. thing. I was about to say Gregson for a moment, but I'm like, no, no, no. Use your head. Use your head here. So, <laughs> Austin Cindric. Use your head. Uh, who's the chat got right now? Because I, well, I, hold on. I got there. You go. Uh, uh, Ty Gibbs. Some some Gregsons. I'm seeing. Danny has Harrison Burton. Yeah. Oh, I got what? a response for my guest pick. Uh, yeah, Ty Gibbs. <laughs> He's picking Ty Gibbs too. <laughs> Wait, can we know who this guest was? Uh, it's, it's I'll tell you afterwards. It's just, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a secret, secret guest. Uh, it's just like your roommate or something, is yeah, it? it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> He's back in town, actually. He has his own apartment out here now. I got a job. He's <laughs> my old roommate. All right, who Chat, do we got? Who do we got? Chat seems to be between a lot of Brandon Jones as well, some Cindrix, a lot of Gregsons, and I Ty Gibbs. I see a lot Gibbs. of Gibbs, yeah. Yeah, I think it's between Ty Gibbs and maybe Gregson. Ty Gibbs, Gregson, or Jones? Yeah, or Jones. Brandon Jones getting some votes. Mm. And no, spamming's not going to help. <laughs> so, uh, ah. might as well give him. Um, it looks like Gregson yeah, now. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, give him Gregson. We don't. We can't all be picking Gibbs. Yeah, give him Gregson. That's what y'all get. Gregson. We saw Gregson. That's what you deserve. That's what He's you right. Get. Did, you, did you see his tweet? He's throwing it back to his 2020 Daytona win. <laughs> what? That's what he said in his tweet. I like that. That's oh, funny. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, and now to the Cup Series. So we have a plethora of picks. Who's going to suck? Underdog and winners. Wieners, excuse me. Uh, Who's so going to win? Win, exactly. Eric, start us off. Who's gonna suck at Darlington? Oh gosh, I really don't know. I, I know. 
I, I didn't look, I didn't do much research this week. I, this one snuck up on me a little bit, so I'm not even sure. Off the top of my head, I'll go Bubba. I don't think Bubba Wallace runs particularly well. Yeah. Okay. Been... Had a bad couple of weeks. Yeah. Some bad, Especially bad Kansas. Moments. Yeah, it got that damage and it was over for him. Um, for who's gonna suck? I'll go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Sorry, I know we got a fan basically saying I'm hopeful, optimistic, but I think he'll uh, sweep the trifecta three in a row, three bad races in a row for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Remember, uh, crashed in the uh, um, in the May race uh, last year, um, lap one. So you never know. And remember, this is also going to be run with the 750 low downforce ah, package. Ah, true, true. That's so you might change from the last two years. You might thrive. So you never. Well, know. I'm not even saying that about Stenhouse. I'm just saying that in general, um, like. So you agree Stenhouse is going to suck? You agree? Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably am going to regret my pick, but this dude just has, uh, even even when he runs well, he just can't put it together at the end of these races. Uh, this is a very tough track, and I know he probably could play right into his wheelhouse, but he's been on a bit of a, of a bad skid right now, and I think he keeps going. I'm going to go Kyle Larson. That is a risky yeah, pick. Yeah. That is risky. A bad skid after leaving, leading... 120 laps. Yeah. Well, he didn't yeah, finish but, uh, particularly he didn't well, win. though. Yeah, exactly. I, I know he didn't finish. He didn't even get a top be, 10, though. And to be fair, he hasn't shown great speed with this package mm-hmm. yet, so that's yeah. good. That's who not did, terrible. Who did Danny pick? Uh, Danny picked Kurt Busch. <laughs> My guest just picked again. He picked Bubba to suck. <laughs> so, there you I go think again. Almarola is the consensus in the chat. Yeah, Almarola. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's Almarola, bro. It's Almarola. He's, he's literally this podcast punching bag. Yeah. This is so, I, this and he's so, so nice. He's so nice, though. But I mean, just performance-wise, we're just like, oh, what's happening? But yeah, Almarola for the chat. Okay, underdogs. 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 <laughs> so, Eric, who is your underdog? Did anybody in the chat? I don't know if that's what you were doing, Darian. I was singing the old theme song. Yeah, I, I was too. In the chat. I was okay. too. Yes. I don't know if uh, maybe maybe it's a bird. It's a plane. It's yeah. a frog. A frog. No, yeah, so, it's so underdog. It's underdog. underdog. I but I imagine much of the chat doesn't know what the heck's no, going they, on. No, they don't. My underdog pick for this weekend. He won the pro invitational last night. I don't know his exact stats off the top of my head, but I know he's run really well at Darlington, granted with Joe Gibbs every year. But mm, that was my pick. This year, that was my underdog pick. No, I, I think he gets a top ten Eric Jones. Eric Jones, yes, Eric Jones. Yeah. That Jones boy. Yes. You know what's funny? What? That's Danny's underdog pick too. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, he's smart. smart. So my underdog pick is somebody who currently sits inside the playoffs. Uh, he is not someone I've talked about tonight because this dude flies under the radar. And I think he's going to fly under the radar to possibly a top 10 this week. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with Chris Busher. Ah. Whoa. Whoa. He's starting. He's starting 11th in his, you know, like they have the sponsors like Keselowski, the Freightliner Ford or mm-hmm. Cal Bush, the M&M Toyota. He's starting 11th in his Ford. Ford, just Ford. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's probably Whoa. a Ford Ford. Yeah. Hopefully he goes Ford word with it. Oh, you're, you're off my show. Get off my show. Get off the show. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'll anyway. do better next week. <laughs> anyway, he clicked on, of course. <laughs> oh, now he moved, though. <laughs> That's oh, whoops. I, I ruined it. Oh, shit. No, I'm no, dark. you didn't ruin it. You're still in frame. You're still in frame. Oh, He's you're in dark. Darkness. Oh, the lights are out. Oh, it's the, stu- the stupid fly has landed on my mm, phone, by the way. There we go. So it looks like the chat, um, they're picking – oh, i seen a lot of Austin. Oh, MV, stop uh, stop it. You're spamming. No, no, no. So it wasn't Austin Dillon. That was deceiving. So I, I a saw lot a lot of Eric Jones. Yeah, earlier. just put Eric Jones down for them. And also, the guest just texted me. He said Matty D. So Matty D for the underdog pick. All right. And that's, again, somebody else who currently is in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. And now – Who's going to win? Who's going to win at the... I was about to say Auto Club Super Speedway. I did a stream there last night. No, no, no. Who's going to win at Darlington for Throwback Race Weekend? Eric, start us off. Who's going to win at Darlington? Every year he's very competitive there. You know, different rules packages and such as well. Uh, I'm going with our 11th different winner this year, the number 11 of Denny Hamlin. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't okay. trust Hamlin anymore. I don't trust him, man. He keeps. I, I picked him three times, either a second or a DNF. 
So no, I can't trust him until further notice. So I'll wait on that. I trust you, Denny. But I trust. I trust you. But I trust this guy. Chase Elliott becomes our eleventh different winner of the season. Again, I'm looking at the list. You know, Chase Elliott still with no win. Kevin Harvick as well. You know, these are some pretty notable guys. And like you said, Denny Hamlin too. So I feel like one of those three are um, gonna win, and I think it's gonna be Chase. Danny has picked Tyler Reddick to win. Mm, that is it. Hey, that is a ballsy pick. Ballsy. How many points is Danny behind right now? Oh, it, that's. 20, was it 25? I it's think. 21. Guess, I'm behind 25. Guest might have a shot at him. No, no. He's 21 behind. And the guests are ahead of him. Or, no, excuse me. Yeah, the chat's ahead of him. Excuse me. Hey, where'd Reddick finish uh, last week? Where did he end up? Uh, I mean, he ran uh, well. But yeah, but where'd he end up? I. It's somewhere probably in the back, not, probably. Yeah. Probably not good. Yeah, not good. Well, <laughs> I am going to pick somebody who has, in his career, run well here. The last time we were here, this man was a lap away from getting the win. I'm picking Austin Dillon mm-hmm. in that red, white, and blue three car to get the win. That's right. He was, he was catching Darlington. up. He was catching up to Harvick there, too. Maybe a couple more laps. That might have been I a different story. I forgot about that. Yeah. That so, was crazy. Yeah. So. I, I think I think Austin <laughs> Dillon's going to get the win, uh, and I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong uh, about him. See, he has he this huge has points this. lead. He has this huge point lead, and now he, he uh, gets to make these uh, comfortable picks now. You know, like, oh, Austin, I also have the points lead either way. Hey, so. <laughs> all Austin Dillon does is win crown jewel races, and now that the Indianapolis, the Brickyard 400, is kind of off the schedule, this is the last one he's got. Yeah, that's right. This will, this will complete the trifecta. That's right. So uh, who's who's our guest picking? So our guest picked – oh, he picked Kevin Harvick. See, he, he hasn't watched really since last year, sort of, so he's kind of like thinking Harvick's still uh, a winner. I want to know who this guest is. It's I told you, he's my old roommate, basically. Oh, it actually is? Yeah, I yeah, was just I joking. I just texted him. No, I oh, just texted him. Yeah, for real. That's good. <laughs> he's the only one that would respond, so I'm like, okay. So <laughs> who's the chat guy? Uh, one oh, guy was well, now Harvick. Colton DM'd me again. I'm like, it's too late now. <laughs> too late, Colton. Who well, who, who's Colton's pick? No, no, he was like, he's like, oh, uh, do you need the bell? I'm like, no, it's too late. So, oh. it's, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, it's all good. <laughs> oh my God, there's actually some Harvicks in here. I wow. do. See, there's, there's really just one guy he seems to be spamming run, Harvick. He did run second last week though, and he was up front for quite some time. True. So, you know, yeah, well, now not, there's now there's a couple Harvicks. Yeah. See a lot of oh, it's varied. Some hey, Austin Chad, Dillons. I just want to remind you guys, you guys are 17 points behind. Y'all better be smart with this. Yeah, this is this is a big one. Now, Al Capone is not a good pick. I'm Al just Capone. telling you now. I'm trying oh, to that, help you stop, out. Stop, stop, because oh, finish, and Ferb. Oh, see, they're not taking it serious. Do we have to pick the page again? <laughs> Come on, guys. Y'all better make y'all's right pick. <laughs> okay, now we're starting to see some serious ones. Kenza. <laughs> Kenza. Oh my god. Hey, he had his, one of his best runs here last yeah. year. How'd, I, how'd the second run there go? I'm I don't seeing, remember, but the first one was good. <laughs> look, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing Harvick. Basically, he keeps popping up. So, I, I, yeah, may, maybe. Might as well have, just give him Harvick, Jared. Just give him if, Harvick if you want to. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to say. I don't know. It's hard to say it, though. But that chat's going off, man. There's there's a uh, lot of different uh, ones. Yeah, it's very it's split. It's hard. I know. That's what I'm saying. Let's just let's just lot of down to. I'd say let's say Harvick or Chase Elliott. All Chat right. right now. Harvick, Harvick or Elliott. Or Chase because that was the most we've yep. seen. Harvick yeah, remember we, we gotta wait like ten seconds. Yeah. But then Tyo Cruz. That's a name I haven't heard in twelve years. That's pretty funny. Santa Claus. <laughs> Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Well, one of them drives a Ford. Yeah. Harvick or Elliott. My mom. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Harvick or Elliott. Anyone that's not Harvick or Elliott, we're, we're no, we're ignoring. I'm still seeing Harvick, bro. Oh, now they're now. Oh, they're oh, oh there oh, it is. Okay, oh. so like a delay. There's, I think it's looking chase. Yeah. Actually, no, now oh, there's more Harvick. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. It's so hard. Harvick's name is longer. Takes okay, longer how about this? It. How about this? How about this? This will make it easier. All right. One for Elliot, two for Harvick. That, there you go. Not, That's not, not going to be easy. <laughs> not easy. <laughs> you just made it more difficult. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> I know. I just want to see everyone's this is reaction. Funny. Oh, my oh man. Ah, the stupid fly. See, we're about to see one to two transition here, so you gotta give it some time. It's like day to night transition. <laughs> Blue Jimmy put Zendaya. Z- Zendaya. Oh my Duke god. And Schmertz. <laughs> I guess they. Whoa, it's that's a lot of notes. Looks like binary code. Okay, that's, that's a lot of ones. That's a lot of ones. That's a lot of ones. There, I see. That's a lot of ones. Craven got him. Oh. All, right, all right, let's give him Chase. Then. Yeah, Chase. Yeah, they okay. got Elliot. You're in the same boat as me here. So, all right. So we have that picked for them. 
And yeah, so that'll conclude. <laughs> Wait, what was that last super chat that just flew through? Oh, let me see. <laughs> I didn't even see it. He said, he said, bribe to become the chat spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> This is big for everybody. Thank you, Answer Daz. Thank you so much for the five dollars super good. chat, man. Appreciate it. But yeah, that'll conclude race win picks, or you know, just race picks in general. And before we head out, one final run of the super chats uh, we have received tonight. Once again, really appreciate the continued support for the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Groovy Goose sent two two dollars super chats. Thank you so much. Um, Jail Dernhart in your spin the UFO. <laughs> He like switched up the first level. Jail, I'll spin. Jail I'll spin. Dernhart. <laughs> yeah. I'll spin that. And then the second one is it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Groovy Goose. Yes, and Groovy Goose. Thank you again. Wait, for the wouldn't jacket. that be a? Wouldn't he be a bird? Oh, never mind. Go on. <laughs> You're thinking too much, Eric. Come on. I love. I think I love, he's not thinking enough. <laughs> I love Andrea Riggs. Stevie Nicks will win Darlington. <laughs> Tyler Tinsley, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Uh, Going to Dover next week, any tips on going to a NASCAR race during a pandemic? Uh, Just make sure, you know, you uh, wear your mask, and then when you get there, you know, if you're allowed to take it off, then, I mean, yeah, just take it off, I guess. And if you're wondering, you know, obviously bring ear protection, and I don't know if they're doing – I don't think they're doing scanner rentals at a lot of tracks, Mm, so you you might have to bring your own. If you don't have one, I think you'll still be able to follow along and enjoy it, but at least make sure you got ear protection at Dover. I'm sure it's loud. See, I never use ear protection. I don't think Jared does it in like net. Well, it's good to no, have I, it in I case. Have oh yeah, that's right. See, I'm like, I love to hear. I don't know, my hearing's gonna suffer later on. So. I use it most places. There's some tracks I haven't really needed. I'll, I'll take it off occasionally. See, like I already, the loud. Oh, good. I already have tinnitus. I don't need to make that's it worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, the loudest I've heard cars go by is when I was on the straightaway working like one of these cameras, um, and they were just entering one, so they were at their peak. You know what I'm saying? And then they get off like. A few feet um, entering the corner, but it's like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that was the loudest I've ever heard. So my hearing's gonna be messed up for quite some time, probably. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so really appreciate that super chat and the final one, the final one of the evening. Oh, uh, answer dies. Yeah, you already sent it. Bribe to become the chat spokesperson, huh? Dude, see if we have a if we have a chat spokesperson, the chat is gonna be so pissed, probably. We become super corrupt. Just <laughs> yeah, the basically, it, yeah, the highest bidder. The chat. Yeah, yeah, you can't buy your way on the podcast, pretty much. <laughs> but no, nah, I appreciate it, man. So that'll conclude super chats, and that'll conclude another edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Let me scroll up in the itinerary here to see who's up next. Oh, and we are on Eric Estep's channel next week. Oh, oh, and yeah, he, oh. and he just found out too. I just I don't look at the itinerary beyond uh, the show, so now yeah, there we go. Oh, oh we got one more big super, super chat. chat. Philip yeah. Richards, thank you so much for the ten dollars super chat. Used to watch races with my mom. Um, wait, right, hold on, let me scroll up. But she lost interest years ago. Y'all's community is the closest thing I and a lot of others have to NASCAR friends. Appreciate everything you all do. Uh, you all and Danny do really appreciate it, man. That Thank you. Yeah, that Thank you. That's so really, that's very nice. Yeah, that means a lot. <laughs> Groovy Goose once again with another $2 super chat. Iceberg is your dad, uh, or uh, excuse me, Iceberg is your dad a glacier? Spin the UFO. <laughs> so another, sure. Yes, yeah, so sure. another, another pun to the Glacier name. might be watching right now. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Oh, man. So uh, any final well, thoughts here, folks? Well, Next if week. your dad's a glacier, then what is your mom? Because this weekend is Mother's Day. Oh, so right. yeah. happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there. Right. Happy Mother's I've never, Day. I've never met either of your, your moms. I don't think I've met, I've met, haven't met either of your parents. You guys have met my dad, right? Yeah. 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 I've met my dad. I'm well, you'll meet, okay. you'll meet my parents. Both of y'all meet my parents this year. Uh when y'all come up for Road America. So. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's right. Big. I'll meet that. Yeah. I don't know when you guys will finally uh, meet mine. My mom has a real southern accent and stuff, so it's really – it's very noticeable. So She'll fit right yeah, in. <laughs> well, no. no you don't. <laughs> so she's funny. Well, I, I don't have a strong southern accent, but everyone around here does. So. But here's the uh, thing. My mom's lived real, out in Vegas for 20 years, and she still has it. So I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? So, so it's funny. Real real quick. Um, So, yeah, next – when we're on Eric's channel is next Wednesday, normal time. 8 p.m. Eastern. No more double headers. This was a one-time deal. One-time double header, basically. Should we should, should we, we tell them what we 10 years when the next next gen car yeah. is written? Should, should we tell them what uh what stuff I looked ahead and found out about what uh what special episode we have this summer? Oh, oh tell yeah. Them. yeah, yeah, we can start to tease that. Yeah, yeah, I think we can. Already. I think I think I can tell. Yeah, so um because of this double header, and we didn't do it because of this, it just happened to end out this way. 
uh, we're all going to Nashville, mm-hmm. and we're all going to be at Danny B's house. Yeah, we so are. the first episode with all four of us in one spot is going to be episode 150. So that's yeah, crazy, right? that's crazy yeah, timing. It's such crazy timing. And- I know. I I, oh. I didn't even mean it for that. Like I because like we we brought up the idea together about mm-hmm. a double header and and I didn't even think anything about it. And then I like I looked ahead when I when I started counting ahead and I'm like, oh my god, 150 mm-hmm. is the one we're all there for. So <laughs> that's crazy. The- Live that's awesome. from Danny B's. Yeah. Live- Room. Live from Nashville. Can't wait. And one final super chat before we go off. Nicholas Gray, thank you so much for the $2 donation. Don't forget about Mother's Day. Yes, and he just mentioned it, so really appreciate that. But yeah, so that'll do it for another edition of the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. Yes, do your thing. Get ready. Anyways, ready? thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time. Goodbye! Yeah!